Oh. Welcome to another episode of the Rock Fantasy Files, and tonight we're going to be talking Ozzy Osbourne. So last week we tackled Ozzy Osbourne in the Black Sabbath era. Now we're going to go solo. Of course, he was known as the Prince of Darkness, also known as one of the founding fathers of heavy metal. His solo career started out with Blizzard of Oz, arriving like March 27th, 1981. The comeback album, not a comeback album, but kind of like it was, it was a big album coming out, of course, after the split with Black Sabbath. We had Black Sabbath going their way and getting Ryan James Dio. Then we had Ozzy coming out with his brand new spanking band with Randy Rhodes on guitar, Bob Daisley on bass from Rainbow, Lee Kurzlake from Uriah Heep, and also played with Rainbow on, on there after the, you know, on from there after the untimely death of Randy Rhodes. All his various lineups over the years were like all star bands. You know, just all, not, maybe not all the lineups, but he had so many famous and great musicians that played in his bands like the guitar with Bernie Terme and Brad Gillis, Jakey Lee, Zach Wilde, and then at the very end, you know, Gus G. And now Zach has come back. Bass players over the years, Rudy Sarzo, Robert Truello, and Mike Enes, Geezer Butler. And tonight's special guest, Phil, is just popping up now. He just made it. <laughs> hey, well, uh, drummers that play these solo acts are like Tommy Aldridge, Randy Castillo, Tommy Clu. I can't, I'm not going to say this right. Tommy Pafetos? Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Uh, nobody knows. It's, uh... yeah, right. And Mike Borden. <laughs> it's 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 a household name in the States, mm-hmm. other than being the Prince of Darkness with the reality show, The Osbournes, which, in my opinion, took away a little bit from his evil. <laughs> And cool character, but turned him into kind of a lovable comedy act. So, uh, Phil, welcome <laughs> to the show. Right, so, are you ready down there? Can we see you, Phil? Ah, you can see me, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. he made so, it. Hell yeah! It's, so it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a confusing embarrassment here because I had I did not know it was Eastern Standard Time. I know Steve that you must have told me that, but yeah. unfortunately. Um, I thought it was PST, and uh, I, I was actually, I had a very long day. I had to leave Vegas this afternoon and, and rush over to Los Angeles, and I just got here, and I got into a dinner meeting with somebody thinking, I'll be back by 9 o'clock, so I'm calling you from a restaurant. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you guys want to come on for a few minutes, and we'll talk to you, and then we can let you run off to finish your dinner, but uh, I'm glad you showed up for a few minutes. And, well, uh, no, I, I, I figured I'd jump on for a few minutes, because I said I would be here. And, hey, uh, um, can I ask Phil the first question? Yeah. <laughs> you know how to read fucking email? That's a what? <laughs> Yes, Mr. Susan, um, uh, do you know how to read your fucking email? No, I do not. And, you know, I've been learning, trying to learn from Andrew Freeman, but, you know, what happens is that if I don't see him for any length of time, shit happens. And this, is what, this is what happens. The EST got, got, but, you know, I, I do have a, unfortunately, I, I had a, it's, it's been a crazy day. I had to come here for, for various different reasons. And I, this afternoon was the only time I could come in. So here I am. I'm actually with Kelly Fair. Who says hello, Andrew. Yeah. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Would Kelly. you like to say hello to Kelly? Yes, I'd love to say hello to Kelly. Hello. I don't know if everybody else does. Hello, Andrew. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, Kelly Fair. Good to see you, man. You as well. You Kelly Fair hello, uh, works Kelly. for uh, 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 the microphone company that uh, 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 Electrosonics that uh, endorses Phil and I. So there oh, he is. Oh, great. There he is. Nice and he's also good for <laughs> Welcome, Phil. How are you? We're getting, we're getting a quick plug out of it, too. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I've got a question for you, Phil. And uh, okay. of course, one of my questions is, how did you get the gig with Ozzy? And uh, how did some of that work out? If you want to answer that question a little bit. Yeah. Um, so basically what happened was um, uh, I auditioned like everybody else. Um, Ozzy, who I, I'd known Ozzy and Sharon for uh, quite a long time through their secretary. And I was playing with another another guy and I was doing a TV show. And we did this this one-off TV show that was a live show in London. And I got back with uh, some of my friends to the, uh, to the apartment I was living in. And the phone rings and this girl who I know says, hey, I got somebody who wants to speak to you. And I pick up the phone and, and this voice on the other end says, uh, uh, 
oh, come, come and make me spirals. Looking for a fucking bass player. And, and the phone hung up. <laughs> spirals is a, was a wine bar in, uh, in, in London, in Hampstead. So I thought that was weird. And the phone rings back again. And uh, my friend said to me, uh, are you going to come and meet us at Spirals? And I said, okay. And then my friend said to me, who was that? And I said, it was Ozzy. He wants to meet at Spirals. I went, oh, okay. So we're bullshitting and what have you. Half an hour goes past. And then the phone rings again. And it's like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> so I had to kind of hot foot it to Spirals. And I sat down. And Ozzy had a bunch of drinks. We had a bunch of drinks. And he told me, he's looking for a bass player. Would I like to come and play tomorrow, next day? And yes, it'd be great. And uh, blah, blah, blah. And then the next morning, I woke up to a phone call from Sharon. And she said, I don't know what Ozzy told you, but he was drunk. And whatever he said, he didn't mean it. So that was the end of that. <laughs> that was it. And then it wasn't until about two months later where I literally, I was visiting my friend, Phil Carlo, who was the tour manager for Led Zeppelin after uh, Richard Cole. And when he lived in Brighton. And we were walking around the streets of Brighton and I literally walked into somebody walking out of the store and it was Ozzy. Wow. And uh, I said, what are you doing here? He goes, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm visiting my friend Phil. What are you doing? He said, well, we're looking for a bass player. Why didn't you come down? And I said, because Sharon told me not to. Well, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, okay. Well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> cool. Go up to London, get a bass, and come back down again. I said, okay. So I went on, got a bass. I came down. I started. I, I did some rehearsals. Then make a long story short, I got the gig. But to this day, I mean, to the end, Ozzy's still convinced. He used to say to me all the time, oh, no, you followed me down there. I did not follow you down. No, 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 I know you followed me down. I said, I didn't. I really didn't follow you down there. I wasn't. He was convinced I, I was like some kind of private detective, like snooping around trying to find out where he was going to be rehearsing and sort of accidentally on purpose bumped into him. And that's not the case. So that's my funny story about it. And what was he doing? He was in a store in a joke shop buying those little glass vials of stink bombs. <laughs> crazy his favorite thing used to be to take those things and break them in the air vents of restaurants stick them under the kick drum pedals of drummers uh you name it uh, it was that was his favorite thing with the little stink bombs and he was buying like an industrial sort of quantity of them so i had the pleasure of seeing your tour uh with uh the ultimate sin tour up at the glens fall civic center in upstate new york and yeah. you were and you had uh, metallica with that's right. Puppets opening up, and uh, I guess that was another question. What was it like having you know Metallica in that time period being the opening act? It must have been uh, an a, a, a event. Uh, I mean, they were amazing because they were very fresh and very young. And the other thing is, um, coming from England, you know, they really established themselves in Britain way before they did in the United States. So we were already very familiar with them. In fact, okay. one of my childhood friends was uh, was Cliff's um, bass tech. And so okay. I've already done shows with them before I knew them for a long time. And so it was, there was a, a, a great de degree of familiarity with them mm -hmm. uh, personally. Uh, but they were fantastic. They were fantastic. And it was, you know, a lot of people, it was very new. That style of music was just very new. Yeah. And literally the audience would change. The minute they finished their set, it was like the audience just revolved. And they left, all the denim clad people left, and then all the you know the Aussie crowd would show up I, I stayed I stayed for both acts but I, I do kind of remember what you're saying with that you had the leather and uh you had the battle battle vests all up front and yeah yeah I actually ran into uh Cliff Burton that day outside the show but uh yeah hey, thanks. I guess that wraps up my questions I don't know if anybody else has a question for Phil Rich or John yeah I mean Cliff was a, was a great guy I got on really well with him Really, really well, and he was—he's uh, the first guy who started wearing flared denims. By the way, <laughs> he was doing it before anyone else, and he was just so laid back and so cool. Didn't say him very much, yeah. but uh, in his way, he was very friendly as well. I spent a lot of time just sitting around, just shooting the shit with him. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I mean, he must have looked at me like, what the hell do you look like? I was covered in makeup and sequins and stuff, and they were covered in very street credible like denim. <laughs> But we, we managed to get beyond that. <laughs> yeah, that was like the Aussie glitter years, right? A little bit. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. 
the, the, the mirror ball look. Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Anybody else have a question for Phil on the panel tonight? Um, yeah, sure. Anybody got one? Or can I go? Not rich. You can go, right. and I'll go. That's okay, fine. so so you wrote you wrote Shot in the Dark. Did you write anything else? Did I write anything else? No, not on that album. That was the only song. I wrote three songs that I presented to Ozzy at the time. We were only looking for one more song because the whole album had been written. And so I played the three songs that I've written, and that was the one they picked up on. And we decided to work it up. And that I, I mean, I, I didn't even, uh, I didn't really appreciate that we were looking for a single at all. I thought, we, they, from what I understood, we were just looking for another song. And then when I was told it's going to be a single, I was like, wow, okay, well, that's cool. So it was, uh, it all very it happened very quickly. And but, it will um, turn out to be one of his biggest hits. Ron Neverson, who was producing the album, came in and he basically said he didn't hear a, he wanted an extra song. And then there was a great deal of uh, brainstorming, if you can call it that, um, where a lot of well known songs were being suggested as cover songs. And Ozzy didn't really want any part of it. You don't want to do Born to, Born to, be, Born to be Wild or, or stuff like that. These were the suggestions that were coming up. So eventually turned around to Randy Castillo and myself and said, Do you guys have any songs? I said, Yeah, I write a lot of songs. So yeah. nice. I'm gonna cool. kind of uh, piggyback off your question with that. I'm gonna mine is like I know you wrote a lot of songs, not just for like Ozzy. What would you say your favorite um, song that you possibly wrote would be and you know? I'm thinking that one. <laughs> you mean favorite songs that I've always that I've ever written? Yeah, because yeah. I mean your discography is like pretty extensive, yeah. not just for Ozzy. You no, know. I mean, no, my favorite songs I think were some of my favorite songs are the songs that I wrote for Steve Lukather, and okay. the ones I wrote with Steve Lukather. I wrote a song called "Broken Machine" that I love. I wrote a song called "After You're Gone" that was nominated for a Grammy with Steve that Toto did that I love. Uh, some of my solo stuff I really um, am very proud of, and so and those those songs I think are probably uh, they they're the ones that I think they're they're a little more uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, a little more cerebral, you know, and that's what I like about those because I do put a lot of, of time into writing and, it, and I put a lot of time into lyrics and I, 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 I spend a lot of time on lyrics. So once I get a chance to do something like that, I want to make sure that it really deals with whatever feeling I was feeling at the time when I wrote the song because there's a sort of therapeutic uh, angle to that as well. So for that, that reason, I think there are some of those songs that... I prefer, but every, Shot in the Dark is one everyone knows, of course, and yeah, I take, you know, I'm, I'm very thrilled and happy about that, but it's an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for answering that. Thank you. Anything to say with Phil? <laughs> Sydney, do you have a question hey? for Phil? Or, yeah. I don't really have a question, but I do want to say I've appreciated your work for many years. So, you know, uh, Shot in the Dark was one of the songs that really got me into Ozzy when I was very, very young. So I just want to say I appreciate your work. And uh, yeah, I don't really have as much of a question, though. But <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. You know, Shot in the Dark, is, what's really unique about Shot in the Dark is it's a pop song. I mean, and I write commercial, I write commercial songs. That's what I do. And tra translating that into a metal song was a really good formula. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a great formula going, look at that album. Yeah, it's a really good formula because it, it, it adds some pop sensibility to, to a song and, 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 and enabled it to become a bit of a, a radio hit. Um, yeah. You know, I'd love to have been able to do more stuff like that. But unfortunately, you know, we couldn't, everybody was in that band. Uh, on the understanding that there was an arrangement and if they were happy with their arrangement then that's great and if they weren't happy with the arrangement then it would be easy for people to be um, to, to go through the band and, and, and make way for, for new people and it got to the point with me where I, it was down to some publishing details and I just couldn't cut the right deal with Sharon we went back and forth and I just couldn't cut the deal I was going to be happy with and so I you know I decided to to move on um but I would have loved to have written some more stuff. I actually did write, start writing songs for Ozzy. They, those songs ended up as, uh, many ended up on Vince Neil's album, on the Exposed album. 
but they were originally written for Ozzy. Oh, wow. So next time you listen to the Exposed album, you'll hear like, That's a great look, look in her eyes, which, sound, which sounds like Bark at the Moon. And you listen to like The Edge, which sounds like SATO. And they, they don't sound like it, but they were in, inspired by those songs. And I wanted to write some songs that were in, inspired by Ozzy's pre, and Randy's previous material. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, okay, I, got, I got a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, you kind of answered it, but I just wanted to see if you could elaborate a little more. I mean, be, being in the Ozzy band, I mean, was it an actual band or did, was it more just like hired guns for it? Or was it, you know, like how was that? Uh, was it like a group? You know what I'm saying? It, we were hired guns. Of course we were. We were hired to do the best job we possibly could to make Ozzy sound and look as best as he possibly could. And we were we understood that going into it. We were all very happy with that. At least I, speaking for myself, I, I was very close to Randy. I know Randy was as well. However, um, that what that band was probably did have a very close band feeling between us as well. And from what I understand afterwards, it never really, you know, it, it sort of lost touch with that, with some of the subsequent bands after that. It might have continued with Mike Inez and with Zach and Randy for a little bit, but then after that, it kind of that, you know, I don't, I don't even know who was playing it the band at certain times i would have to check i would have to look it up so um but we had we definitely had a had a bad feeling with amongst us we, we clowned around we joked together we spent a lot of time having a you know having great moments and yeah. uh between randy jake myself and of course john sinclair who was with us as well you know but it was it was a good band we had a lot of fun a lot of practical jokes a lot of crazy nights you know yeah cool. we were very i was very young I still am, but I was even younger than I was. That was a, <laughs> I think I was 23 this, or 24 or something. What do you got? That was a great right concert now? video. Yeah. Oh. And what? You this is a great me. concert video, The Ultimate Ozzy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's not even available. I mean, I have it. Someone digitized it for me from the VCR, so it's, it, it you know, it looks rough around the edges. But no, it's a VHS. <laughs> it's a VHS. Third, third show on the US tour. It was a little premature, I thought. There's one bum note that I play in there, and it drives me nuts every time I hear it. <laughs> yeah. Count my favorite note on a rest. No. <laughs> you know? Chris, you got a question for Phil or anything to say? Was Phil's actually uh, going to have I'm just saying, I hate it. Hello to Phil. Phil, I've, I've, I've got to play with Phil a couple times at those uh, Randy Rhodes Remembers when it came east, so he was a lot of fun. Who haven't you played with? Today, so I haven't, I haven't yeah. seen him since, though. This is the first it's I've a, seen. It's nice to see you. Yeah, absolutely. Then, so it's good we to had see you. Good time doing those Randy Rhodes things. Didn't yeah, we? that was that was those. I did a couple of those tours, and they were a lot of fun. And you were the second one that I did, so it was it was definitely Ooh. cool to be playing with you and with Rudy in there. Because that's the two different bass Somebody players. Dropped. That you know, so that was it was it was awesome, and and uh, Phil's. You know, he's like he everybody knows who he is and what he's done. And, and I, pr I probably don't have any questions that I was going to ask that anybody else already has. I mean, he's written obviously some of our favorite things and, and it's just great to see him. You know, oh, thank you. Very I'm much. here. I'm late. So I don't know where everybody is. So I don't know what needs. No, to be you, did, you, came in pretty, you came in pretty uh, close to it because Phil Phil is uh, thought it was a different time. And he just hopped in for a few minutes because he's out having. A bite to eat, so uh, you know, yeah. gonna run off soon. On no, well, yeah, I'm I, thinking I, the groove of the music in the background. So. <laughs> I, I, I do that? have one question: Is what, yes. what what did you order for uh, dinner? <laughs> I haven't yet. I haven't yet. <laughs> what, anything that's like enticing? Uh, they, they've got a uh, they've got something called uh, uh, I don't know what this is. Park at the moon. <laughs> They got some good bites of, to, to meatballs, some uh, SAT salmon. Uh, I don't know. Cool. I guess I've got another question for you, Phil. And if you yeah. want to sit out for your dinner, uh, you could uh, take off if you'd like, if you want to hang out. But uh, what were some of your favorite songs that you played with Ozzy, whether they were from Ultimate Sin or just ones that you performed live? Yeah. Um, you know, so honestly, my favorite songs are probably, and, and when we do the Randy Rhodes Remembered, that's really an opportunity for me because a lot of those, my favorite songs are the ones we didn't play. So, you know, if I had to pick three favorite songs that Ozzy did, they would probably be, I mean, I, I absolutely love Little Dolls because of the bass line in that. Bob Daisley did a fantastic line in that. It's really tricky and very, very clever. I love playing that. 
Uh, I absolutely love uh, Diary of a Madman. Me too. Because of, uh, yeah. the story, the fantastic story about that was when Randy Rhodes, you could tell that that was very much a classically influenced thing. And then when he presented to Ozzy, Ozzy went, no, oh, the hell you, who, how's anyone going to sing over this? Was, he was basically saying that, that Randy must be high because there's no way that anyone could sing anything or find something to sing over something like that. But yeah, he did. And uh, I don't know the details of how exactly it came up, but that track is just fantastic. And I love playing it. And uh, I think uh, uh, I have to say that uh, uh, the, the last one would probably be, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I like Revelation, that. probably Revelation, Mother Earth. It's not as, good, as, far as, as far as the tracks that we love to play, I mean, I love playing Suicide Solution. I love playing I Don't Know. I love playing Flying High Again. And all of those have just, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of credit that goes to Bob Daisley because these bass lines that he came up with were fantastic. I mean, they were, they were staple lines and they're legendary lines and they're, they're just very gratifying to play. And they're tricky too. They're not easy. So, you know, a lot of credit goes to Bob. Yeah. Excellent. Bob rules. Well, thank you, Phil. <laughs> Bob <you>. rules. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so anyhow, Okay, well, listen, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry that I'm not sticking around for the full thing, but if I get done in a bit, I'll check in again. How about yeah, that? You, you can always welcome to, and uh, it was an honor to have you on the show, Phil. And uh, Thank I'll you very you much. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in. Great meal. <laughs> Well, I, you. Uh, I've got a little bit, we're doing a little bit of a business meal here. I'm trying to cram everything because I've got to go back to Vegas again tomorrow. Okay. But, um, but uh, it's really a pleasure to do this. And thanks very much for having me on. And maybe we can, uh, we can do it again. Yes. Sometime soon. For sure. For sure. Cool. Take care. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. Everybody. Hey, buddy. See you. Andrew, I'll see you later. See you, man. That's yeah, I'm, 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 right outside, I'm right outside your front door. Would you open the door? It's freezing out there. <laughs> I, I won't. <laughs> I will not. It's drafty and it's cold. Go back to your, your hip little LA lifestyle. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. It's, it's really, <laughs> honestly, I'm looking forward to being home. All right. I know you are. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Uh, Bye. Thank you, gentlemen. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for Phil Sasan. Phil Sasan, everybody. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Wonderful. tell everybody to play my new songs. I've got two new singles that I released. You saw those, right? Me? Yeah, I saw them. Before, yeah, yeah. I saw them repeatedly. Yeah, them for three they're on, on here. <laughs> they're, 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 both on, they're both on my YouTube. Tell people, uh, if people want to go to my YouTube channel, which is Phil Susan official. The one I released uh, about six weeks ago was about the pandemic and about the fact that we can't play any gigs called Please Don't Make Me Wait. And I got some audience participation because I got fans to send in photographs of their venues, favorite venues shut down. I used them in the video. And then I just released a song a couple of days ago called Fly Again, just to keep keep people engaged, just for, for the fans, just for fun. So please check them out. I'd appreciate that. We definitely will. We definitely will. Cool. All right. Thank you. All right, man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See you later. Bye bye. Later. All righty, guys. We're back to our, our regularly program. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna miss that music. Program. Dealer Steve, I have I have this. I don't know if you have one of these in your house, Steve. This is the uh, original English Blizzard of Oz with the with the uh, photo on the back of uh, a. I don't have that house. one. I don't That's know. I've got, this is the English Blizzard of Oz, the original. With the, no, the, I don't uh, have the English one. I, just got, I got one that's falling apart, and I got the, a repressing from a couple of years ago. Yeah, this is this is the uh, the first release that came in England, Blizzard of Oz. It's pretty rare. It's even got the English nice. price tag. It was only five pounds at the time. Five pounds. <laughs> But that's uh yeah this is apparently this is apparently pretty rare so it's not, the only thing I have was interesting so I brought that cool. in. So All we're right. gonna start going around how we're gonna work this tonight. We're just gonna go we're gonna go around twice. We're gonna go around for the first one. You're gonna tell us our first our favorite songs and uh, I'm gonna let someone that's new to the program tonight, first time ever, Rich Catino from uh, Brave Words and Metal Asylum. Welcome to the Rock Fantasy Files for your first episode. Thanks. Hope you're enjoying. Thanks, it. man. Thanks, guys. And so thanks for having me on. 
your top oh, three dude. Uh, <laughs> solo songs, and we'll awesome. come back around in the end and uh, get your honorable mentions. All right, cool. So in 83, Bark the Moo came out, right? That was 83, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So now if I'm correct, this concert, didn't this show up on MTV at that time? Didn't they play it or parts of it, I think? It could have been. I don't know if it was a show, but something something from the tour, right? I want to say. I just remember the the video. Was it the Us Festival? No. No, I think it was after. I think I remember seeing. It was in in like a um, arena or something like that. It was an indoor show. Like footage from this tour, right? Yeah. Because that's how I remember seeing. Solo. Yeah. I mean, aside from, you know, the song uh, Bark the Moon, the video. Yeah, I, just, I, remember I only seeing, remember the video. Yeah, and I think I remember seeing this on TV at some point, too, yeah. like the footage, if I remember correctly, because I was, you know, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there in those years. 82, was, 83. Now it was, there was a show of, of the Bark at the Moon tour. I can't remember if it was on MTV, but I, I know I had a copy of it somehow. USA so, Network? Who yeah. knows? And I, I can't play. remember. It was too Something. long ago. But I remember, I remember seeing, you know, the footage from that. And then, of course, the Bark at the Moon song, the video. Because in 83, you know, you had, uh, what was it, Choir Riot, Come On, Feel the Noise, and yeah. Twisted Sister, I Want to Rock, and We're Not Going to Take It. And then, you know, 84 was around, you know, the same time. So you had Motley Crue with Looks That Kill and Too Young to Fall in Love. So when I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, those videos, they made a big impact on me. So... Mm-hmm. I would say definitely Bark at the Moon is one of my three. Okay. Especially being a horror fan. You know, I'm a horror fan as well. So Bark yeah. at the Moon is one of them. Um, two, I would go with, yeah, him turning into the werewolf. That was awesome. Yeah. The title track to Diary of a Madman. That's the second one for me. Love that. that one, yeah. Such a great piece of music, you know? Absolutely. And I got to take one from... Probably my third favorite album, The Ultimate Sin. Oh, wow. But I'm not going to, I love Shot in the Dark, but I'm going to go with Lightning Strikes. That's a great song. I always, yeah. I always love that song. I love that riff. You know, Jake playing that cool blue Charvel, I think it was in the video, right? Didn't you play that in that video? I think so. Yeah. He was so, he was so cool. He was so badass. So I think that's my three. Lightning Strikes, Diary, and then Bark at the Moon, because I'm a, cool, I was cool, a horror cool. fan. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks for your opening statement, Rich. I'm going to move over to Sydney Ann Taylor, one of my longtime customers and from the Metal from the Inside podcast and from Sea of Tranquility and one of our Hudson Valley Square Monday night uh, friends of mine. So uh, welcome to the show, Sydney. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really excited for this because I mean, I love Ozzy. Ozzy Solo is, you know, right up there for me and my my list of uh, favorite bands. So uh, my three, um, I'm going to start from my third one to, to number one. Um, so I know Phil discussed a little bit, Rich just discussed it. Uh, my number three is going to be a title track of Diary of a Madman, of course. Um, I love so many songs off of that record specifically, but I mean, Randy is, is, you know, probably my favorite guitar player of all time. Um, I, I love Randy Rhodes and uh, he does such phenomenal work on those two, two first uh, Aussie records, but like uh, Rich just mentioned and Phil mentioned, of course, just such an incredible piece of music. That title track uh, has so many different ebbs and flows in it. And that solo is just, it's just insane. So uh, that's going to be my number three. Um, my number two is actually going to be an unreleased track that was off of Blizzard of Oz, wow. um, called you looking at me looking at you. Not sure. I, I love that song. Cool. I don't know it didn't end up on the, the record. Um, it was on the remastered version. Uh, but it's just, it's so killer. It's got such a catchy hook. The chorus is catchy. Uh, everything about it, I feel like it should have been on that album. Um, but Blizzard of Oz is already such a perfect album that it's hard to <laughs> choose what I would take away in order to put that song on. Um, but I, I love that Randy really shines as he always does in a lot of those tracks. Um, and my first, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking to Phil, um, I gotta go what's personally for me, Shot in the Dark off of The Ultimate Sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was really young, uh, there were two songs that I would listen that was my favorite when I would sit in the backseat of my parents' car and it was No One Like You by the Scorpions and Shot in the Dark by Ozzy Osbourne and I, I loved them. And so Shot in the Dark has stuck with me 
as I kind of grew up and became a metal fan and really got into this stuff on my own. So uh, I know it's a little bit on the popular side when it comes to Ozzy and it's a hit, you know what I mean? Um, but I love that song. It's it's catchy. It's It's got everything that a, I feel like a good metal song from that time period should have. So uh, that's going to be my top three. I have a lot of honorable mentions as well. So Awesome. We'll be that. back and we'll uh, check in with those, of course, in a little bit. Yeah. And uh, next in line on here, and I'm not <laughs> doing a joke, so don't worry about it, Andrew. Uh, John McAtee from The Mighty Incantation. Welcome to the show tonight. Thank jokes you. Jokes can't stop. <laughs> I'm here for the jokes. Tell <laughs> <No, no, laughs> no, a goddamn joke, then. Chris, when I, when I go up to I'm Andrew, waiting for the right there. moment. No. I've been waiting for one every show I've been on. So, Chris, should Andrew be next in line, or should he be the one that goes last? Well, truly, oh. if he was first, he could also be last. Remember that. <laughs> Look at my wrist. on what direct, direction you're going in, because, you know, the oh, last yeah, in well, line first. is the first in line in the other direction. So just yeah, First in so. line to get the fuck off this show is what I'm <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm already done. Goodbye. No. I'm going to like everything you like anyway, me Andrew. Too. So you you could speak for me because all my favorites are yours. No, forget it. Oh, <laughs> touching. Uh, so back to John McAtee. or will let you take the room, John. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I'm a really big fan of the early Ozzy era. Um, yeah, I mean, just that that lineup from Blues of Oz and uh, Dire to Man Man is, you know, totally awesome. But, I mean, really, even, um, you know, like uh, Bark at the Moon, that was that came out around when I was really kind of getting into metal more as a kid too. So that, I mean, that album kind of means a lot to me too. And uh, I think Jakey e. Lee is also a phenomenal guitar player. Uh, it was just a lot different, I think, than than Randy, but um, you know, really great in his own right. Um, as far as songs, I mean, I, eh, I mean, a, a top three. It's kind of tough. To pick to a top three because I think all of Blizzard of Oz and all of Dire to Man Man is just, um, mm -hmm. you know, amazing, really. And, I, you know, Bark at the Moon is also a great one for me. I, I When it comes to the, the further on it goes, the less I kind of like it as much. I mean, The Ultimate Sin is a good album, but I like it a little less. I say to Bark at the Moon and each one after that, I kind of like a little bit less, yeah. even though uh, No Rest for the Wicked is, um, you know, a pretty strong album. It is. It, it's, I, I just never took on to the Zach Wilde style of playing of those Ozzy songs. Um, it just, it just never seemed to me like the best option guitar wise, but obviously I'm wrong because everyone really likes them. So it's mm -hmm. fine. But um I don't know. I guess I would pick for my third favorite. I would pick off Bark at the Moon. Um, uh, Center of Eternity, I think, is a good one. Excellent uh, song. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, I like the more epic songs. I mean, I, I mean, I like all the songs. I, you know, Bark at the Moon's a great one, too. You know, Rock and Roll Rebel. I mean, they're all great songs, but I just like the little bit more epic y type songs. And I just, I think, um, it kind of shows off a lot of, um, you know, Jakey e. Lee's killer uh, guitar work and just his chording and stuff like that, which is kind of, um, you know, kind of distinctive, I guess I'd say, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then uh, my second one, uh, it, I, I'm just picking one off my top three albums because it's kind of impossible. Um, okay. But Blizzard of Oz, uh, I mean, I guess I have to go with, revelation mother earth i mean that is a monster of a song i mean yeah you know when i heard that it's like get out of here get out of town you know i mean this is ridiculous you know how how amazing of a song that is um it's the one like you do this too as a concert yeah the whole uh, i mean just that lineup was so in the pocket and on fire and just so they were just able to express themselves so good with the music and ozzy was just singing at the height of his talent i think you know i mean it, i mean his vocals were like you know just as good as they were like on like sabotage or something like that where he was just really going for these you know super highs and i think they did like the double vocals where he gets like a, a kind of a mid tempo or i don't know if it's a chorus he puts on it or if he just double tracks them but um it, it really has a cool um a cool kind of harmony to his uh vocals i i know it's a lot of those songs um so yeah and then on Diary of a Madman, I mean, that, you know, that's my favorite Ozzy album. 
Okay. And another one, every freaking song is great. I mean, I'm looking at the tracks now and it's like, man, they're all freaking great. But I, I, I think Diary of the Madman has to be my favorite off it. I mean, it just, I listened to that structure and, and that, the classical influence on that. I mean, the whole album, this, I mean, this album just seems to have more of a classical uh, sound than Blizzard of Oz. And uh, just, um, yeah, mm -hmm. Diary of the Madman, I mean, that's a, that's a great freaking song. I mean, mm -hmm. for Ozzy to put out two albums like that after being a Black Sabbath, I mean, he basically cemented his um, history and metal there, you know, because I, I really don't think anyone thought that he would be able to put out anything worthwhile because, you know, how much of a mess he was at the end of Black Sabbath. And he just mm -hmm. comes out with a one, two punch like that. It's just like, you know, yeah. Lord, everyone, everyone was just like, oh, oh, man, you know. So, yeah, those are my th top three. Awesome. Uh, Andrew Freeman. Oh, <laughs> You are next. Chris Caffrey's going to say, he, oh, Chris Caffrey doesn't even have to talk because he's just going to say. quiet today. Why don't you just play, why don't you play us some Aussie, Aussie riffs? Whatever yeah. Andrew says, I could, I could, you're going to agree. He with, should. So. Yeah, it's a good idea. I like yeah. it. Whip out a guitar. Play some flying <laughs> high again. I have a lot of songs, like a lot of songs. And All it's right. really. You know what you do when he's asking it's about Aussie. It's really, it's a, yeah, it's a lot of. There's a Lawrence Welk one that I really dig. There's uh, uh, no, there's a lot of songs, man. And I know it's it's this kind of a cliche thing to be like, oh, to narrow, I could never narrow, narrow it down to three three songs. Is, uh, that's well, you can you can break <laughs> all the rules. Like. Andrew, you can break three. You, how, you dare, break. how dare you? Three. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to do it. But I might mention more than three. Oh, if you want to do 30, number three, to go in hurry. number three for me, just because I can't pick anything off of Phil's album as my top, because then I'll, you know, I'll have to listen to him tell me stories all night. And, and I, you know, cause he calls me every day. So um, very needy, <laughs> very needy individual. Um, so number three for me is, is uh, the title track for ultimate sin. Uh, so it is, is a dope, song as, as the kids say yeah. it's it's uh the low Rad. tuning and the uh just the 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 floor toms you know drums with that it's so fucking heavy and when it came out it sounded so heavy because i don't know chris what he tunes to is he down to d or is it is it like c, c um I i'd have to i don't remember exactly what that one was i can't remember if that whole record was turned down a half step or not it might be it might have been like probably actually, I think it was like a C sharp to be at. It was probably C sharp. They were C down sharp. a half step and they were. Yeah. And they bring it down another. It yeah. yeah. That makes sense. So, so yeah. So that, that's, that to me, it was just a really different sounding song at that time because there wasn't too many people that were tuning down at the time. You know, I think uh, Eddie did it and, uh, and, um, and um, Unchained. And then the guys in K then King's X did it. King's X kind of made it a yeah, big I thing. Believe it. The, the, Chris Oliva did that with with um, Power of the Night was the first time that they tuned down their C. That song, and then Hall of the Mountain King was a, was a, a was down a drop C, and that was pretty early in that game. But Power of the Night was eight was uh, eighty five, so that was pretty early in that metal. What game. was that down to? What was that tuned? Yeah, that was a C. It was a drop. Really? Was, yeah, they were a whole step down on that record. It, that was a whole step with the drop C. Back then. Oh, I, I love it when people mention songs and they just pop in your head, and they're like. So yeah. over the top, like power of the night was, you know, like ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. raise the fist of oh, the, the wild <laughs> of the night. Ah! Yeah. Exactly. Great. Great. So I remember hearing that on Metal Shop years ago. Like yeah, I have metal, 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 metal shop. shop. I remember Metal Shop. Yeah. You put the cassette, you know, you put it in front of the other radio, you put it in front of the radio so you could the bass anyway, here. So the bass. So that <laughs> so uh Ultimate Sin, that's my first one. Uh, number two would be, uh, uh, it's a tie between Mr. Crowley and uh, Believer. Oh, um, two great ones. Yeah. Like Believer. Believer is one of the, actually one Believer. of the, believe it or not, believe it or not, that's one of the ones I was going to pick too. That, that guitar riff is just so freaking badass. Really. The, only, the only reason I would say Mr. Crowley is because the effect it had on me when it came out. It was, it was very... It was just so evil, you know. It was just yes, 
Yeah. You're writing a, yep. He's writing a song about a, a famous Satanist and, and he was the most evil person on the planet. I'm getting into fights in school <laughs> with the jocks because I, I have an Aussie patch on my jacket or an Aussie t-shirt. The Aussie t-shirts that we would get in the middle of the mall at the put on spot yeah, yeah. The, 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 like the plastic decal or whatever it was um iron so yeah which yeah, iron, 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 iron on yeah, yeah. So that's that was my first ozzy shirt was one of those so uh so mr Cl crowley over believer only for that reason because i i, I love believer it's it just it, the way it just goes in and out of all these different things it's it's, it's amazing. amazing uh yeah and then number one for me is um over the mountain Fucking excellent song. Great one. <laughs> and, and because it's 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 the it's everything that I think an Aussie song a, a Aussie song should be. It's got just bombastic drumming that 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 the uh, drum fill that opens it up um, is ridiculous. And uh, and the guitar solo is is just yeah so well crafted. You know the. the uh, Coincidentally, I did a cover of it with I did a cover of it on, on Dave Ellison's new record. But the it's just that when it comes out of the out of the like the main solo in it, the drums are dun dun and he does this whole like roll off thing on the lower part of the neck. It's such a simple little thing, but it, it's just so effective. And it the way he just just the way he constructed it, Randy constructed that guitar solo is is uh, yeah, Mr. Crow Mr. Crowley and that song were probably two of my favorite yeah. solo so guitar solo pieces from Randy well, on those of, records. Of course they were, because but, I just said they were mine. So no, but it's very as far as <laughs> but you're mentioning the guitar solos in particular, and they really were those two songs had very, very, very awesome, really yeah. long and well constructed. And all of his guitar solos are well constructed, but Mr. Crowley and um and uh over the mountain were two that and to me always stick out as the ones that that yeah. his two like signature solos they were awesome those two well he did that that mm -hmm. that pull off like riff that pull off lick that he does yeah. at the end of the guitar solo is is very similar to the one in, and i don't know but it's like the evolution of that lick yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. i don't know you know, comes out. Well, he was down. actually he was he was playing it a little bit better, and that's the same thing. Yeah, go back exactly. to, to Chris Oliva. Chris Chris wrote a, a riff that he had, and he, he came up to me when he was rehearsing for recording Gutter Ballet. He's like, "Look, I just wrote this," and he had a this riff where he used to roll up the scales, and and he used it on a bunch of different solos. And every time he did it, it got a little bit better, it and it became better. one yeah. of his signature things. And it's the yeah. same kind of the same thing as that. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those those two licks were the ones that I could play pretty flawlessly because they were easy but they were really impressive Sound badass, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so, uh so yeah so those are my three um i would like to mention that i'm a really big fan of miracle man because it was the first time i ever heard ever heard zach wild play guitar um and it's just a it's a kind of an off the wall riff you know it's fast and it, it takes a little bit of discipline when you're yeah. that, when you're as young as i was when it came out and tried to play it um <laughs> So yeah, it's that one and, and uh, the other one I, I really like. But for just to on just to mention Zach uh, was uh, Demon Alcohol on the on that. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah. Great song. So anyway, that's it. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and when every time I we I, I think of the song Believer, I think of the local band that was from Middletown, which was the Copex, right? Had Believer back in the day, yeah, back. yeah, and they used to do a lot of Ozzy songs and stuff on that. I remember, like, that's seeing... you know, that's who we should have had on. Should have had Scott on because Scott is like, oh, we Ozzy, I didn't even think of it. Ozzy expert, like he knows everything. Uh, know. He was kind of like our. He kind of reminded me of when we were back in the day that he was kind of like our Randy in the area because he had yeah. the same look in the hair and yeah. yeah well, that yeah. was their band. Yeah, that was their band. It was like they had. They had Randy on guitar. They had Eddie Van Halen on bass, and then whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck Rick was in the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Kopech brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. So anyway, they, great they memories, great memories. Uh, yeah. I guess Robin is next. Okay. I didn't make you go anywhere near first again. I know better than Robin. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so I did mine. I don't have any props as usual. Like everybody likes to hold up I props. I can hold them up for you. I don't have any props. <laughs> yeah, you don't have. But I don't. I didn't bring any props again. Um, but I'm gonna do mine a little bit different. 
I'm going to do mine a little bit different and I'm going to go with my three albums and the songs on those that are kind of my favorites. All so, right. Um, for number three is actually Ultimate Sin. So okay. and off those is that are Lightning Strikes, Ultimate Sin and Shot in the Dark. Those are the songs on there that and it's, you know, I think it's a great album and I'm glad, you know, they, I don't want to say I'm going to bring up Metallica, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, Metallica with that. And then um, for my number two Ozzy record is Blizzard of Oz. I love that record. Um, on that album, my favorite songs are number one, Revelation, Mother Earth. That's my favorite one on there. My number yeah. two is Goodbye to Romance. And number three is I Don't Know, and which is weird because when I was a kid, I mean, I was very, very young when it came out and I was having to take Spanish in school and I would sing the song as Yo No Say. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 you know, just trying to translate it in Spanish. No. But anyway. Um, Yo No Say. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo No Say. So, go, go, go. How do you say go in Spanish? <laughs> yeah i used to try and like Too yeah so nursery. that's my silly thing with that but anyway um and my number one choice for albums by ozzy is diary of a madman and on their number one song is diary of a madman Excellent. number two is over the mountain i love that song still to any time it comes on the radio even still i'm i still feel the same way about it i'm not bored by hearing like it makes you want to play air guitar when you hear that song I, yeah. it's still it's so solo. good dun, 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 you know <laughs> and um and then number three is flying high again which is another one that's a radio song that i'm still not sick of hearing which you know yeah. which it can happen as you know if you're in your car and you're yeah. playing the same songs all the time. You're kind of like, eh, I can live without this. But those are my favorite. And then I'll say some stupid stuff when we come back around to me awesome. again. For things. Excellent. Uh, for, you know, <laughs> like if you don't listen to the radio, like I really don't. I don't. These songs aren't as played out as they once were. I, I have to because I don't have any other way uh, okay. to listen to anything in my car. <laughs> okay, so you got like Ozzy's Boneyard or something on, and you're going to hear that song a lot. <laughs> you got XM on. Christopher Caffrey, how are you tonight down in the bottom square? Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right. I always say stupid stuff, so I don't have to wait till the next time for that. But <laughs> no, I'm glad you're on the show. Yeah. You're always a great guest to have on. Hey, yeah, where, this, where this is, is the this first is fun, This is a fun one for me. I mean, for a lot of different reasons. I was so. Young, obviously, when these records started coming out, but they were, you know, right along with anything is the most influential records that there were for me as a guitar player. I mean, what was the uh, the year that the first one came out? Wizard of Oz was what, Steve, exactly? 81. 80. Yeah, so I, was, I, know, I was basically, 80? you know, like 12, 12 years old, 13 years old. And that's, you know, when I was, I started playing at 11. So it really was, I began playing guitar and, and and Blizzard of Oz was one of those records. And, and I graduated high school and actually in my um, little quote in my yearbook, I actually put um, a quote from Goodbye to Romance in there. And it, it said, goodbye to friends, I guess that we'll meet in the end was actually in my high school yearbook. And I love that. So goodbye to Romance is one of my favorite songs on that record. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, it's hard for me as everybody else says with all those records, because I can pick a part of almost every single song because I've I played them and I, and I like them all. But I think that, that song in particular has got a, something for me, obviously, for that reason, it's very special. And, and um, you know, same with, with Diary of a Madman. It's like, I, I love Flying High again. I think that that solo was was something I worked on a lot when I was a kid. And then I got a chance to play that song in the um, Randy Rose Remembers Things a couple times. That was one of the ones that Tishy always had me me do. And those Randy Rose Remembers shows were really fun for me. And the, the very first ones I did, I was only called at the last minute because... Um, Joel was doing it and then somebody had canceled out, couldn't play. I think it might have been Skolnick that couldn't make it. And um, they called me down to do like one song and there was the, the tour. 
And then a few other people just had things come up but couldn't make it. So by the end of that first Randy Rhodes Remember tour, I was doing nine of the of the songs in the set. And and um it was just really fun to play that music live in that circumstance. And and Randy's uh his brother was there and his sister was there, and it was just really fun. Mm-hmm. And, and Randy's brother had told me that um you know, I don't know if this is something he says to a lot of different people, but he said that out of all the times that he had listened to people play his brother's music since his brother was alive, he said if he closed his eyes and listened to me playing Randy Rose, that it was the closest that he thought he was wow. listening to his brother. And for me, that meant a lot just because I grew up playing. Randy Rhodes to me was more of an influence on my guitar playing than Eddie Van Halen. I didn't I went to Randy when most other guitar players were clinging on Eddie. I mm. went to Randy. So I wasn't really the, the finger tapping guy. I was more of the, the Randy Rhodes metal and, and, and that, and actually the Vivian Campbell was, was a bigger influence than, you know, and Rick and Rick. M. so I, I kind of went, I didn't not listen to Van Halen, but it was one of those things. So Randy Rhodes was definitely something that I really loved. And if you go to, um, that live record when he does those old Sabbath tunes, I always loved the way that uh, that Randy played "Children of the Grave." He did "Children of the Grave" really. Oh right. yeah, the live record. Oh dude. Yeah, yeah. the yeah, Randy Rhodes, and I got to do that with the Randy Rhodes. Remember, and that was something that his brother had told me that in particular when he listened to me play the "Children of the Grave," he says he. he could swear he was listening to his brother and that was just something that was really cool because especially coming from a situation where where Chris Oliva died you know and I had to Mm. go on stage and play his stuff and and know what it means to somebody really close to him obviously playing with his brother and 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 the way the Sabotage fans were for me that was you know it was one of those choke up moments where it it just really meant a lot I mean I love all the the Ozzy records I think they're all a lot of fun to listen to I am a bigger fan of the Jake records than the 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 um the newer ones and that's just because i think jake really he married that when when it left and went from die every madman to bark at the moon i think that transition was very difficult and bark at the moon i thought was a really challenging time to be a guitar player and show up and i think that that was one of the greatest accomplishments in, in metal guitar for me is is how well jake did with bark at the moon i think that that record was really that was a challenge i mean you had to follow up randy rhodes and and i think he did a great job and i, I really liked the, the jake records so it's nothing against zach i think zach makes the best Zach wild in the world but i just think that um there was something really special about that beginning era of Ozzy before it got, you know, it did get hyper commercialized towards the end. The music was oh, awful. Yeah. The music was great. The production was great. There's no denying that. And like Andy was saying, the, the couple songs he mentioned off the, the Zach Wild stuff, or, you know, Zach definitely, you know, he named his himself through that and has become one of the biggest guitar players in the world, yeah. establishing his own thing. But um, I just think there was something really special about the Randy Woods. And, and I actually really like um, what Brad Gillis did on that oh, yeah. speaking of devil, speak of the devil. yeah yeah that was great yeah and i, I actually had yeah. I, I couldn't get a ride to the capitol theater to see the blizzard of oz tour so i had my first ticket to see randy at the meadowlands um on the 26th before he died on the 19th and, and i was supposed to see him on the 26th so i i never got to see randy rose because he died a little bit you know about a week before the show i was supposed to see so and I thought that um that Brad did a really great great job when we got to see him, but it was definitely it was upsetting for me because there's really such a small amount of of bootleg live footage. I mean, yeah. you, wish that, you wish that people like Chris Oliva and, and Randy had had cell phones, you know, when they were alive, so we could have had all the Everybody different. Was we, like, we tend to hate when, this at the show. When, when we play shows. There's like 80 different live videos of us, and it's like. <laughs> I, I only wish we had one of those concerts with Randy where there was all those different live videos so I could get a chance to to appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, like way. the clearest, the clearest one that exists, I think, is like visual wise is when he was on, I think that like cable TV show and like it was like yeah, upstate exactly. New York or something yeah. like that. And I mean yeah. that's the clearest. I mean, there's some video of him that you can find on you, you know, it's very yeah. slim, but the clearest that you can actually see him playing is I think is that one for sure. And I actually, that that's the thing that I used when I was going to do those Randy Rose remembered things was that particular video you mentioned because Randy had 
you know, really big guitars in the studio and he did multi tracks on his leads. And I wanted to see what he would play live when I was going to play him live because yeah, you saw Jake do it. You saw this person do the song, but I, that was the, where I went mm. to see what Randy did. There was things he did in Mr. Crowley that nobody else did when those little parts in Mr. Crowley, Randy yep. played it a, a way that nobody else played it. And that's kind of where I was taken over those things and when I can hear them. And that might be one of the reasons why his brother noticed Randy a little bit more when he was listening to me play, because I in particular tried to find bootlegs and live things to see exactly how did he do this as one guitar player? Because those tracks were huge in those records. I mean, those yeah. records were huge guitar tracks. He layered everything and, and you know, there wasn't a lot of guitar players that were layering solos at that time. I think Matthias from the Scorpions used to layer all of his solos that he did. Mm -hmm. But uh, Randy was one of the few guitar players that would play three, four tracks of the same solo. And, and um, it was just cool. So it, it's, it's definitely hard to pick other ones. I, I, I love all the, the guitar work. I, everybody picks Die Every Madman, but that, that song is just brilliant. I mean, and, yeah. and Believer was just such a brutal metal guitar riff i mean oh, yeah. it's just it's just great it, it was great really powerful music and i like you know what i'm not one of those no, there's no i have no offense to it but a, a lot of people always sit there and say to me like, oh you don't smile enough in, in, on stage because they always take selfies of the other guys in the band and everybody's always smiling super it's like randy rhodes never smiled when he played guitar he was always something he was always really aggressive in that and not that i go up there and try to look like an ass but it's like guitar players like stevie ray vaughan and 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 him and even Chris Oliva, they got up on stage and they just played so hard. Yeah. The last thing they were thinking about was smiling for somebody's selfie. You know, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, having metal doesn't, and smiling doesn't, doesn't mix. Remember? Yeah. Don't be, you want to smile on stage? Be in poison. I mean, if you're if you're going to, you know, go 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 be in poison or watch poison. If you're looking for a guy to be like, hey, yeah, exactly. Halloween, that's, Halloween you're metal. allowed to smile on Halloween. You're allowed exactly. to smile. I, I didn't grow up in the, the hair metal stuff, but. No, there's no smiling in metal no. nah. <laughs> nah so that's that's it for me though yeah it's like i could go on Excellent. for hours about this music it was like i said that was my yeah. thing that really seriously and, and and andy's i mean that freaking holy diver record and the, the blizzard of Oz record were probably two of my most influential records of my life as a guitar Excellent. player with those two particular albums holy diver and and blizzard of oz we're, we're and i remember Madman too but i think even more so blizzard of oz but it was just Excellent. those records were what i grew up on well that, that too chris like what you're talking about with the live record like the the uh the um the brad gillis record and then the tribute record you know that's really the first time anybody's really heard those black sabbath songs uh with that sort of life to them you know what i mean yeah, Where exactly yeah it was you know you know Sabbath is a doom band, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're a stoner, stoner band, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's droning. It's a, it's a certain thing that that's what Sabbath is. But when it came in, when Ozzy started doing the stuff, soul, the first real exposure that anybody had to it was when Brad Gillis did it on the speak of the devil record. And it was just like, Whoa, like kind of blew your mind here in Iron yeah. Man or hearing, you know, some of these songs are just kind of like slow and, you know, just, just droning metal stuff having this kind of LA guitar player flash, you know? Yeah, good point, you know, good point. Yeah. So it, yeah. It, it definitely put Ozzy in a different, in a different place for me too, because it was, it brought this whole new excitement. And I, and I really dug that, that Brad Gillis record too, because he, you know, he, he was the first guy to play that stuff with a fucking whammy bar, you know, like he, yeah, yeah. with a can opener, you know what I mean? <laughs> And that's, a lot of song, that's a lot of songs on that record and he yeah, got yeah, yeah, right. played him and did his own thing with them and that you know Dude, it was unbelievable you yeah, know but then for the tribute yeah. album but then to hear hear randy play children of the grave yeah yeah like, what and even his paranoid the way he he would trill the, the you know and the e chord oh, yeah. and paranoid it was like just little things like that that you know he was just taking it and, and making it a little bit more modern metal and it was just fun to listen but that's to. when i when I play guitar and I play, I, when I don't play much anymore, but when I, when I did, when I played those Sabbath songs, I play them like Brandy or Brad Gillis, yep. you know, because exactly. that, was cool. that was fun. You know what I mean? It was interesting and it was fun. And, and, you know, we're all, we're all kind of children of that, you know, we're children yeah. of the eighties the rock, you know, that where it was, you know, now it's just this laughable, they call it hair metal and it's, it's laughable and, you know, steel Panther, you know, bags on it all the time. And that's yeah, all yeah. good. But, but back then it was different. 
you know, it was different and it was, it was fucking dangerous, man, yeah. you know, and it's, it doesn't get credit for being fucking dangerous anymore. You know, so. and look at this picture. Of, look at this picture. This guy just found this in my collection. Today. Oh wow! That's that's Phil's old girlfriend, apparently. Is that Phil's old girlfriend? Well, yeah. maybe he pops back in. We'll ask him about it. But anyhow, I guess uh, <laughs> we'll move into the second round of things, and I'll finish up my first round. I'm going to do everything for me all together, so we can just move along. Uh, yeah, hurry up, Steve. Thanks for everything. Yeah, hurry up. Up for a half hour, hour again. Go on. No one wants to hear the record store guy talk. They only hear the musicians. But oh, yeah, they my do. First, Come on. My first time see Oz, seeing Ozzy live, I never got to see him at Black Sabbath original. But uh, the first time me seeing him live was at the Mid Hudson Civic Center with the Blizzard of Oz, uh, with Motorhead opening up. It was a uh, very unique, very intense experience. And, uh, you know, getting to see Randy and, of course, Motorhead. We're standing on top of our plastic chairs like, what the fuck is this? You know, it was so fucking heavy at that time. And then later on, a few months later, I got to see the Blizzard of Oz up at Music Mountain in South Fallsburg, New York. If anyone's old enough to remember that venue, it was uh, the open. Oh, music. I remember Music Mountain. Yeah, yeah. My, I, uh, and, I have, uh, my brother went to that, yeah. Def Leppard opened up that night. It was Def Leppard on the High and Dry Tour, I believe. Wow. Then I got to see the Bark at the Moon tour. I believe Motley Crue and Wasted were on that tour at the Meadowlands. <laughs> I, I, and I saw the Ultimate Sin tour, which I mentioned earlier at the Glens Falls Civic Center with Metallica. No Rest for Wicked, where we were talking a lot about that album. That was here at Middletown at the Orange County Fair Speedway. White Lion yeah. and Vixen were the opening acts, I believe. Which, hey, Steve, which concert was it at the Meadowlands where Metallica opened everybody destroyed the seats again? That was... If that was Ozzy, that was Ultimate Sin Tour. Was it Ultimate Sin? Yeah, that Metallica yeah. opened on and that. I mean, Ozzy, I remember Ozzy was in trouble. I mean, Judas Priest did something like that too, where Judas Priest yeah, got Priest the at the garden and, and Ozzy was yes. at the Meadowlands. At I the was at the Ozzy show. show and you could just see those. like this like foam yeah. flying through the air. And like an Ozzy just of course go, let's go, everybody go fucking crazy, you know. And uh it was just uh back in the eighties. Metal concerts at arenas, parking lots could get real hairy after, and a lot of other stuff went on that you don't see anymore in metal. I mean, going back to that time period, of course. Uh, oh yeah, I guess we were we were, were dicks back. Then. Yes, <laughs> we were, were such. Uh, well, Chris Allo was talking to me earlier this morning, and we were talking about uh, Ozzy shows. He said he saw, all, I think, Ultimate Sin tour at Nassau Coliseum with Queen's Strike open. He said it was an absolute riot in the parking lot after the show. Wow. Yeah, actually- I uh, understand, uh, Jesus. Uh, Steve. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and then- uh, and, and now, You I'm, know what that happened with us the last TSO concert? Gra grandmothers were fighting over-, over <laughs> 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 yeah. and then, and Grandma, you, went, like, grandma they, lost they her fucking really mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> They fight over everything in Long Island. It's but then, weird. of course, later <laughs> on, after seeing all those shows, I saw Ozzy a million times. I can't remember all the times. But, of course, in, like, 2000, I started doing the Ozfest every year. And I would hit two or three dates on that in the Northeast. I'd hit PNC. We'd go to Camden. We'd go to uh, Wilkes-Barre. And a lot of times then, it was, you know, Ozzy solo some years. And other years, he'd do the Black Sabbath reunion. And the last time I saw Ozzy, I, I hopefully it's not the last in concert, but I, I actually bought this shirt, which I thought was a cool, it kind of looked like the Speak of the Devil years. And I got this at the No More Tours 2 at the PNC Art, Some, Art Center in September of 2018. And Maybe uh, you can get one at the No More, no more Tears 3 tour. Yeah, I was going like to, and I'm going to add to John's comment, I'm just going to say sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I buy concert shirts at every goddamn show. You want to have the whole collection of no the final tour for him. No more tours. I, I love buying shirts. Don't make fun of people buying t-shirts because you want to buy t-shirts when they come to you. No, I'm down. It's <laughs> cool. Yes, I was a sucker, for it, but this is a nice design, right? Nah, it's cool. Yeah, it's Old great. school. But uh really really brings out your for my top three songs. I'm going with Suicide Solution for number three. Everyone's pretty much described these songs and all the way up and down. So I'm not going to do much description so we can move along with the time. And uh, Mr. Crowley is my number two. Yes. Uh, 
I'm going with Bark of the Moon for number one. I just love that. I love that. That's I, a great I song. That. The horror. Oh. And uh, <laughs> Ozzy Bachelor is here, and he wants. He doesn't like it when you bite his head off. Oh. <laughs> but uh, and of course, um, honorable mentions. I'm going to do mine now, and then we're going to go around and get everybody else's. I don't know, of course. Crazy Train. No matter how much that song is played out, it's one of the most you know. It's like a household. It's like a household metal song. It's on every goddamn football game still. It's something that's played in all the arenas still. And I mean, it's a great song, even though it's. I mean, it's beaten to death because we've yeah. all heard it a million times. And uh, Revelation, Mother Earth, Suicide Solution, which I already mentioned, Over the Mountain of a Diary, Believer, as Sado, and. Uh, you got Miracle Man from No Rest for the Wicked. I love that album too. Devil's Daughter, Bloodbath in Paradise. And Ultimate Sin, no one mentioned. I thought Killer of Giants is one of the best songs. Oh, ever. that is a great song. I forgot about that one. That is and a great song. Into the Zach Wild years. There was some great, like, like Chris was saying, a more polished and really set up for like total like saturation of radio and everything else, but like No More Tears. I think No More Tears, the, the song off that album is one of the, is a great Ozzy song. I just love that, you know, where they just go through that whole motion of No More Tears. I like this cheesy song. I think it's really cheesy, Perry Mason. I like the riff. Oh, I like the riff. That's the riff, I think. I think it's a riff. Yeah. It's, kind of it's one of those ones where you listen to the song and then you get to the chorus and it's kind of like. Very uh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> they really you couldn't have thought of a different game. You know, it's like Fred yeah. Flintstone. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I put up a thing on my Facebook page asking other people. A lot of people picked uh, Mama, I'm Coming Home as one of the best songs. That's a great uh, song. That that the, the beginning of of his time with Ozzy. I think in a, you know what we I don't really know him that well, but I mean maybe there was something about it getting it too commercial that for for him, you know, was 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 not um the same as it was making those first records. I don't really know. I I don't know him I well enough out my... to say that, but I mean but his his work on those the first records those songs definitely were in that element where you were still feeling that the they were an original kind of Ozzy record I just really love the two records that you know the, the Jake time I just really love those records I thought yeah that, sure you know, sure you know especially the first part it was just for me there was something that he did there was a task that had to be done to get into Ozzy's band after mm -hmm. after Randy I mean Zach had to replace Jake who replaced Randy so it's like the 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 bar was you're not saying the bar was lower but you you had a little bit of breathing room to, to come after i mean i mean come Jake, after that i mean you still had to be great but there was a slight bit of breathing room that you didn't get out of the gate coming into uh to following up randy Rhodes. and i just thought that, I mean, that, jake, that jake did a great job with that and he was great performing too i mean his stage performances on those ozzy tours were great and he was a great live player i mean so was zach zach was was really I mean, good zach i mean zach i know for many many years of zach playing lead guitar for ozzy and they, i mean those were some of the big big shows i mean yeah no but they, I think songs, just, like oh, I they all, they all perform they all perform yeah. great they're all great performing guitar players so yeah. it, um it was just like i said i think there was a huge task that that Jakey e. Lee had, you know, he he, yeah. he really stepped into something that was difficult. Excellent. So Rich Catino, Rich Catino, I can't even pronounce your name here. I've been up too long <laughs> today, but uh, let's go with your uh, closing statements today. If you got any honorable mentions or any kind of Aussie moments you'd like to share with us or the, and the viewers, of course. Well, I never got to see him in the eighties because it was I was just too young. My parents yeah, wouldn't let me go. Young. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was 12, 13, 14, 15 years old up to ultimate sin my parents will let me go especially after like you guys were saying all the stories about the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the nonsense going on at the concerts my parents were like you're not going to see that, <laughs> that <laughs> that's why story. when they played like like this concert on mtv or the ultimate sin yes. one yeah. you know i watched those i, I love watching those when they were played on mtv you know and then like i said i'm pretty sure this show was on there too right some point yeah, it was, I think yeah. it was, you were saying yeah. Yeah. so yeah. you know i got to see i got to see ozzy in the 80s from watching the videos on mtv so what was but, the first um, tour you got to see rich no more tears okay so that's 91 92 right yeah, somewhere yeah. around there 90 91 92 
Yeah. And I would say actually two of my honorable mentions would come from that album. I would pick Mr. Tinker Train and Desire. Yeah. I really like those two. And uh, I go back to The Ultimate Sin. I like Secret Loser a lot. That's another favorite. I like that song too. I think it's, I thought people were going to make fun of me for that one saying it's cheesy because it's like yeah. uh, Secret Loser I think is awesome. And I think it's one of, I love Jake's solo in that too. It's great. So catchy. Yeah, great solo. Um, Bark, I got to go back to Bark at the Moon for Center of Eternity and Rock and Roll Rebel. Yeah. Oh, great. yeah. That's wicked, it. wicked, nasty riffs. And uh, I got to go back to Diary again for um, Over the Mountain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another, you know, these songs are always in my playlists. Always. Yep, and yep. I got to say, too, I think when Gus G was in the band, he was terribly neglected and underappreciated. And I wish they did a record with him because I'm a fan of his band Firewind and they've yeah, got some oh great my. songs. I love Gus. They got some... I, was, I was really excited when he got into Ozzy and then nothing really happened. Yeah. It was very unfortunate. They, they got some great songs and great albums and I wish that, you know, they gave him the opportunity to, to do his thing and they didn't on that album screen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I got to I had the tour with Gus when he was, uh, when he was, before he was in Ozzy and he was, he was playing with Firewind. Or he still plays Firewind. Him. I love that and, uh, style of power metal. Yeah, great band. I saw him in a small, a really tiny club in in, uh, in Minneapolis, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, he just, oh my God, he just tore it up. And then I saw him, God, it might have been a year or two later. And I, I ran into him at some, I think we were doing another gig together somewhere. And I just ran into him. He was doing a Firewind gig. And yeah. and he had got, he got the Ozzy gig, but it hadn't been announced. And I could, But Ozzy had said, I got this Greek, this guitar player from Greece. Yeah, and I like maybe two or three days later, I ran into Gus and I and I said, "You're Ozzy's new guitar player, aren't you?" <laughs> he goes, I, he's like, "I I can't talk about it." I said, "I knew it's." I said, "I knew it was fucking you, dude. I knew it was you." And I just you know just like, dude, like right before it all took off for him, I was like, "Man, this is so great for you. It's, you're so good. You're such a good player." Blah blah blah. Yeah, you know. But like, imagine a, you know, a song guy, like you know? breaking the. Imagine a song like Falling to Pieces or Breaking the oh, Silence thing great from Firewind. That would be perfect yeah. for, you know, his playing, I think, would, would be great in Ozzy, and they just didn't utilize him. And yeah, definitely so, not underutilized, yeah. and, are, and he's gone. Like, Zach's back now. Uh, I'll tell you a quick Gus G story. Uh, uh, probably it was during that time period. Uh, we had got a call from someone that worked at Alto, and they said, uh, you know, Gus is doing a guitar clinic here today. And I'm like... Mm -hmm. We better get there early. This place is going to be packed. It's Ozzy's guitar player. He's right here at Alto right. by the fairgrounds, and there's yeah. like seven of us hanging out there. There was nobody it, there. It's not. It's just not the same anymore, dude. It's not the same. No. You know, it's, it's I, won a, he, I, I won an amp. Did you? Like a, yeah, because he was there like with ESP <laughs> or something, and uh, we, you know, he did the raffle. And it was only it was one out of seven of us or ten of us maybe <laughs> that were there. And I actually won the little portable amp and I gave it to my employee at the time, Steve Levin, because he, he played in the band. I don't play guitar or anything. What am I going to do with it? So, you know, we got to meet Gus and take some pictures, but that's my yeah. Gus story. Other than I, I saw Firewind probably <laughs> like 10 times. I used to see them every time they come around. Yeah, every time they came to America, I saw them too. Always yeah. supported them. Well, Henning's still singing with them, right? I think Henning is, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's on the new, um, the new record. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he was a great singer. He was that he did that first Metallium record. It's so funny. I went and stayed in Hamburg with him for a month in the Reaper Bomb. We used to we used to leave in a taxi cab every night, and we would. He had a nickname for the for the street hookers because the hookers in 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 Amst, in uh, Hamburg, <laughs> you didn't make it to the window because it was all government controlled. You had to work on the street before you got to the to the windows and they, it was snowing there in winter time and they had on these snow suits so he used to call them the snow beavers but i i, I did a record, I did a record with with henning that first metallium record i did in in hammer he's a great singer wow that's a great album that's yeah, a great album the first one was really we are, we are talking about doing a new one but um henning was speaking to lars like lives on an island some like a visa or something like that he took, took all of our money and ran but you know it's like one of those <laughs> ones where that was one of those records where the first Metallium record it was funny because I was doing a tour with John West and Mike Tirana in Europe of, of cover songs. And Lars, the bass player from Metallium, was the agent for this tour. And he came up to me in the Sabotage tour. He's like, look, you come in the studio and do a couple guest solos on this Metallium stuff. We'd really like you to come by. And I did. 
and he was doing this record with Toronto and he found that singer Henning and then he says like can you you want to come and co-produce the record with me so he gave me I forgot what I got but he gave me money to co-produce the record and I went to Hamburg and I was getting ready to fly home and he he went in a different studio with Henning and did the vocals and left me with an SSL and two inch tape reels and I had to engineer this record I'd never <laughs> worked an SSL or two inch tape machine before in my life I learned how to put those tapes in to take them out and run the SSL on my own doing that record and um I produced all the guitars recorded all the guitars and bass on that and um I was getting ready to fly home and he goes well we have a press conference coming up and he, I said okay well I could do the press conference because oh but the day before we have a photo shoot and I said photo shoot what are you talking about because I was not <laughs> under the awareness that I was supposed to be in the band. I found out I got half the band's first record deal, which is a lot of money, telling mm. the record company I was a member of the band because Sabotage yeah. was really big in Europe at the time. And he goes, if you do not get in this photo shoot with me, my house of cards will fall. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so I, I made a deal with him to get more publishing on the record to do this photo shoot, but he kind of snowed me on the... Uh, Okay. On the deal because he did give me more publishing, but he did it tricky. He gave me like the intro song I wrote for that record was instrumental. He gave yeah, me a okay. hundred percent. Like he he was supposed to in increase my publishing across the board, and he like stuck it into spots that were never going to be played. <laughs> it was kind of um, you know. And then Toronto and him never got along, and and, and I just I ran away from it because it was just really. There was a lot of business confusion, but it was a cool band. But we've talked about maybe doing a new record with that at some point in time. I mean, I know that um that Henning would love to. I don't think Toronto would would work with with Lars. We better get we better get back. That's a great story. We better get back to the Aussie thing. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Well, sorry. Like, well no, you know, I hey, you, hey, you. you got great stories to tell. It's amazing. But uh, uh Rich, uh, were you finished up up in that corner? Yeah, I was. I think I gave. Yeah, I gave all my all right, my so honorable mentions. And over to Sydney. That, wait, it's his fault because he said that was a great record. Then I just <laughs> ran. No, 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 no fault, down, but I just we got to move along. I give you the buzzer. Pete <laughs> Pardo needs a buzzer on him on Monday nights too. Sometimes we'll hit Butch and we'll hit this one with a buzzer. Sometimes right, Sydney, welcome happy. back to the show, and you've got the room. Yes, yeah, so I mean, a lot of my honorable mentions were mentioned already, but uh, okay. I have to mention Over the Mountain. I mean, like uh, like we talked about, the solo on that is just insane. It's just it's just crazy. Um, and I forget who said that um, that that album was more classical, and I definitely think that that album was, and it kind of shows on that solo for sure. Um, so I, I love Over the Mountain. Um, I love Tonight off of that album as well. I think that's yeah. a really great song. Yeah. Um, yeah. That has been mentioned really i mean that that entire album is just killer from top to bottom um goodbye to romance is really close to making my list too i i love that song i mean who doesn't it's you know i guess if you want to say yeah ballad for ozzy but i mean it, it's, it's a lighter it's, song yeah yeah it is and it's but it's like the perfect it's like the perfect ballad for ozzy um so I, I love Goodbye to Romance, uh, Road to Nowhere. I love too, to be honest. That's another Aussie ballad. That's that a great song. Enjoy. Yeah, the ballads I, are great. I'm glad you mentioned ballads this week. Yeah, not all of us were talking about the ballads. <laughs> I love Road to Nowhere. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of of No More uh, Tears, top to bottom, but I mean, it's a great look at song. Songs, though, on that, yeah. songs on that record. I mean, the title track, Hellraiser, on that I really enjoy too. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, definitely. That Motorhead did what you know, let me uh, worked on um, that song with him. Uh, the Ultimate Sin, of course, the title track from that record had to be on my honorable mentions list as well. It's just, I, I love that whole album. Um, yeah. yeah, a lot of them were mentioned already. And I do have to say that uh, I know a lot of people don't really like the newer Ozzy record, but uh, the song Scary Little Green Men on that record, I think really. I like that song too, yeah. yeah, yeah to yeah. me, there's some questionable songs on that album. I'm not going to sit here and say yeah. that like, it's a quintessential, like it's like the, you know, a perfect Ozzy record because it's certainly not. But I think that if you had to pick one song from that newer record that ties back to the sound that he had when he was first starting, it's definitely that song. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I think that's a pretty great song for that new record. Yeah, I was really, I, I, you know, that album came out in, before and back thing, when things were normal or early last year and I revisited that album when I was putting my 20 top 20 list or top 30 list together 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, my wife really liked that song too, that scary little green man. It, it's definitely kind of like old school. And of course, it, it's not the best Ozzy record. We're all going to yeah. agree. But it was good to hear Ozzy still putting out an album because he's one of our loved legends in the business. And hey, if he can still, if he's still alive and all he's been through in his life and he's putting out an album, and there's some decent songs to listen to on it. Yeah. And at least we get to hear him because, you know, it's Ozzy. So yeah, that's it was how, better than expected. Good. Yeah, I mean, it was a short little thing. And I mean, I know people gave it, you know, grief for the uh, Andrew Watts, who I know, like, produced it. And they said he, he had a little too much influence on it. And I mean, I understand. It, it's Ozzy. You also have to look at him. He's how old at this point? He's in his early 70s. I mean, oh, yeah. the fact that he's putting out music now <laughs> at all is freaking yeah. miraculous. So I'll take it. I mean, I, I, that's a, it's a fun little catchy song, especially that one. I mean, even the other songs on the record aren't the yeah, best. a couple of good ones. But there's a couple yeah. good ones. It's like if you just want to listen to it to a new, you know, uh, an Aussie album that you haven't heard a million times. Yeah. yeah I, I was I expecting worse that. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's honestly, I like it better than a couple of the albums that he did, yes. like Scream or Black Rain, to be honest. I like it a little bit better than those. Yeah. those um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I saw Ozzy for the first time when I was uh, seven years old at Madison Square Garden, and it was one of the most memorable concerts. It was when nice. I was <laughs> I was really uh, young. My parents started to take me to shows, and that was the first one of the first concerts I went to. Um, I still remember it, you know, very clearly, and um, it was really uh, influential to me because I mean, I was getting into music, and uh, mm -hmm. I, that was like, you know, when I started to get into this music, that was a memory that I really cared about. And a Rob Zombie opened up for him at that show. Um, and I yeah, was it was at that show then, That was, yeah, uh, was that it was that in uh, December. It was in December of 2007. Yeah, it was Merry Mayhem. Yeah, it was, uh, it was like the Christmas one, right? Like a Christmas Merry Mayhem, I think it was Rob. Yeah, Zombie. it was like right but, around, yeah. it was right around I, Christmas. I was there actually, my sister in law went with me to that show, and it was right around Christmas. Yeah, that so. Show. I, that was like the, the first show I saw at Madison Square Garden, the first time I saw Ozzy. Um, and again, That's... it was just super memorable. And uh, I also saw him recently on this tour, the Snow More Tours 2 at bb &T and here in Philly, which okay. I mean, it's crazy. He only played a couple of shows on that last leg because I mean, it was like something like crazy, like only like 10, maybe like yeah. 10 or so shows because he ended up, you know, getting sick. And then yeah. you know, obviously the world uh, uh -huh, you know, he yeah. got sick and then by the time he recovered the world shut down so he never had the chance True. to go back out um yeah but yeah man i mean i i hope that it's not the last time i saw him um sure. i hope it's not but you know again he's in his early 70s you know how i feel the same way and yeah. whenever that day does come where we do lose ozzy it's going to be a very devastating day i uh mm -hmm. don't know how i will cope with that <laughs> How many of you will probably cope with that? Um, mm -hmm. But I think about it a lot. Like he, all these pictures have come out. You know, he's let his um, he's let its like roots grow in in his yeah. hair. He hasn't like, dyed his hair. And it's the first time we've seen Ozzy with like <laughs> almost like full gray hair, and it's like it's just it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's a good look. He's got a couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah hair a little too. But uh, yeah, he's, he's got, you know he's currently still doing his TV joking. shows. They did the one yeah. where he was doing the ghosts or whatever. Now. He, he just came back on with his where he's driving around in the motorhome, like, like hitting the tour, like the little roadside attractions or whatever. It's back on oh, again. Yeah, so, yeah. The, the Aussies, the Jack and uh, Aussies, uh, road detour. And it's actually like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like the Osbournes, really. It's not, it's no, actually I've really one. I find that one enjoyable. I, I like that one too. I like that show. I didn't care that much for the ghost one. My wife was watching it. Or... I mean, he just is a naturally probably in my opinion like one of the naturally like funniest human beings yes, yes. doesn't have to try and it really comes out in that show because yeah. he just says the, the, like the weirdest <laughs> shit and it's just it's hilarious so if you guys you know haven't checked was, out, uh, he, he said something on the show my wife was dying over it because he was like jack was like aren't you afraid of dead people uh ozzy and he's like i sleep with your mom every night <laughs> or something like that <laughs> Something like that, a ghost or something. It was like that. It's something to that effect. But one of our viewers will probably correct me for what exactly it said. But it was something in that rant. Yeah, he says funny shit. It's like the shit that comes out of his mouth. He can't even. Think oh of. yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like where he got kind of turned in for the Prince of Darkness into this like bumbling, uh, lovable, you know, character yeah. in our life. Is that yeah, but yeah, I mean, I love Ozzy. I, I'm glad I got to be on this and. uh 
you know. I'm glad, that, I'm glad you took the time to be with us tonight, Sydney. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's it for me. We can move on to the. Thank you. So we're gonna go back around to John, and then over to Andrew, and then to Robin, and then we'll wrap it up. And oh, Chris can me say now. I thought it was a different order last time, but it's okay. <laughs> Was it? Why did I go yeah. last? I want to. How do you call my credits? No, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't care. I'll go. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say that I it's about the Zach Wild thing. It's not that I I dislike Zach Wild as a guitar player. I just think those albums, he probably didn't have much of a say in it. He was probably just doing what you know he was told to do on those records and. I actually think that Ozzy probably would have had better songs that I would have liked as, as a, a metalhead, maybe not commercially, if Zach Wow would have actually wrote the songs. Um, yeah. Because, you know, I mean, I, I'm not a really a big Black Label Society fan. I don't know the stuff that well. I, yeah. I never got into it, but the stuff I did hear, it actually sounds kind of more like, like cooler, I think, at least. That, yeah. like, I would think, like, it could almost be, like, the way he's singing, it, it's, like, almost like Ozzy could be singing those songs if, you know, uh, you know, with a slight alteration or whatever. Of course, like, well. he does that Zach Sabbath thing, too, where he does, you know, the, the, like a, a Sabbath cover yeah. band, John. Yeah, yeah. Well, Zach sounds more like old Ozzy at times than Ozzy yeah. sounds like old Ozzy. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I mean... And and like those the albums like was it the I forgot what the one was the Wicked uh, No Rest for the Wicked I don't know those albums really no well yeah that one um, yeah. I mean it's not a bad album it just you know it just I mean at that time I wasn't really interested in something that polished and commercial I mean I'm a death metal guy so <laughs> I mean I was I was listening to Carcass Rika Putrefaction sure. I didn't want to hear um, you know something that nice sounding or whatever you know but it was um you know i mean listening back you hear well okay they're they're good songs i mean they're definitely not bad songs. I mean, yeah some of the lyrics were a little ridiculous like the i don't know if it, perry mason's on that one but that was no that perry was mason's one. not that's much later on oh is later it okay then what about what about the one about the little babies and stuff right it's a little Crazy weird babies. too Crazy babies. like mom yeah. like mama I'm coming home. Mom, I'm know. coming home later on, man. That's oh, later see, on. I don't know. I don't know that era of stuff. I, 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 it all gets jumbled up. It's more like a lot of songs about Charlie Manson, actually. Oh, okay. A couple see, songs about me. Yeah, so I, I definitely don't know about that stuff. I made it clear to everybody. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> But, but anyway, on the page. <laughs> I, I, I did see, I, yeah, well, I, I, I really, I kind of stopped following Ozzy probably after uh, Ultimate Sin. And then it was just like bits and pieces I heard here and there, but I never really placed it. Um, and, and the stuff in the 2000s, I, I just don't like it. Like the, what did I want to hear you scream and stuff like that was just, uh, okay. was just not my not not, your I'm not the yeah I'm not the target audience for that I don't think but <laughs> um, but anyway uh, I was gonna say that I, I did see uh, Metallica I mean Metallica the one it, played, it was Ozzy Metallica show at the Meadowlands I was at that one that was actually my first time seeing Ozzy I, I wanted to see him on a tour before it when they tore up Motley Crue but I I missed it for some reason were they tearing up the seats at that one John do you remember was that the uh, one they were I know that that it got pretty crazy. I think they've started tearing up the seats. I know yeah, it wasn't somebody, as bad as the priest one. No, the, the priest one was brutal. That was out of control. Yeah. yeah, but they but someone did throw my um, denim jacket. Um, you know, after the show, I look back and I have no denim jacket. So while I'm like, you know, headbang into the show, someone just took my jacket and said threw it or whatever. So I was kind of bummed about that, you know, but. Um, and, and that, that reminded me of the Meadowlands shows because there used to be that tube that went across like the highway there if you yeah, park further yeah, away. Walk through it, yeah. And like we were always kind of real dicks because we knew that like it was a bunch of metalheads in that tube and they get all excited. We would start like just hitting the side of the wall saying like Slayer oh, or Ozzy yeah, or just something. And people would just be like, yeah. And everybody would start shaking the damn thing over the freaking highway and stuff. Just, yeah. You know, we used to love getting those people amped up, but yeah, there were some bad ones. Um, some of those. So that shows. was you that was making that racket behind me in that tunnel. huh? Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, if you didn't, yeah, if you didn't get enough early enough to park right at Brendan Byrne, you had to park over by Giant Stadium, and you walked over that like tunnel bridge. Yeah. Over the, but if you, yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you parked in that that main area, you had to worry about getting your car caught on fire, flipped over, yeah, and yeah, riot all, broke out. This doesn't so. happen anymore. At arena shows, no. but it happened in the eighties. Yeah, I think I, it, I think even when I seen Iron Maiden with Queensrÿche there, there was like a riot. Oh yeah, I was at the, the place. Uh, rocks were being thrown. Like you were hanging out in your car outside after it. There yeah, were like see, bottles I, just flying. Yeah, there were fires in the parking lot. The bottle. Good clean crazy. fun. Yeah, just you know, we you know, we get <laughs> a bad rap. We get a bad rap as metalheads, but I mean, you know, we just like to have a good time. I don't get it. But that was that was why though. That was why we got a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why my parents won't let me go to concerts in the eighties now. <laughs> yeah, sorry <laughs> about that. Like black and blue with Lebanon Valley when they were burning up cars yeah so yeah but, yeah that's yeah. A whole other, we'll do an yeah. episode on wild yeah. concerts of the 80s <laughs> coming up soon <laughs> but um what was it um yeah i mean but that that show is good um the the ultimate sin tour um i mean ozzy still kind of had that weird phyllis diller kind of look which really just really bothered <laughs> me you know like I, I don't know why he went for that weird short haircut. Yeah, you don't like say? that. Yeah, it just—it was just not a good look. I don't think you know. I mean, for Ozzy, it, it was. Uh, uh, we should have got Jamie from Sato on this episode. I almost thought of texting him yesterday because Jamie still portrays that look. Uh, he's our one I know, of like, our why local did, Why did he take it down and get a perm? I always yeah. want. <laughs> yeah, true. You know? it's that eighties thing, man. I got a perm when I got married. And one, and one thing I wanted to bring up too was it seemed like most most people in the group like uh, Ultimate Sin better than uh, Bark at the Moon. Is that correct? That's me. Really? Oh, I, um, I, I would yeah. say they're would kind say, of both even for me. I, I, I go I for Bark at the Moon just because I love the mood of that record. To me, it's like the Kiss Destroyer of Ozzy. That, yeah. That's just a mood. That, uh, there's a yeah. mood on Bark at the Moon. It's a dark record. I really like that that darkness. I, I kind of like Ultimate dark. because it's it's just it's a more evolved Jakey e. Lee. You know what I mean? He's yeah. I, I, I mean I, the, the guitar solo on the title on Bark at the Moon itself, that you know, is is unbelievable. And that's the one thing about the Ozzy thing that for me that I kind of lost later on because mm -hmm. the last real the last real one that I liked was the one that No More Tears was on because. It just started not to become a band anymore. It, just, it yeah. was more. It was always a band, and it was always like, like um, groundbreaking guitar work. You know what I mean? Ground groundbreaking musicianship. With the, the whoever was playing guitar for him was the best guy out there. Yeah, you know? it kind of sounded more like he just had a, a regular, a good solid band, but not like any yeah. standouts, like total standouts yeah. or whatever. And I, I fit in like Zach. Nothing against Zach. You know, he's he's phenomenal, and he he yeah. does his own thing, but. You know, again, it seemed like he was, you know, they were starting to control the guitar player. And they brought in Joe Holmes and it was just it was over for me because he just wasn't, you know, he was just a filler guy, you know, and it didn't it wasn't about it wasn't about four guys getting together and writing songs. It was about, you know, bringing in a producer who's going to write all the songs for them. You know, yeah. what I, mean? I did then, like the guitar solo on Not Going Away. That so that solo was just really badass on the on the Black Rain record. That's yeah, I, I didn't even get that track. far. First. <laughs> yeah, the opening track that. on that record has a re that guitar solo is really badass. I like that. I love um Zach's style because he had that Almond Brothers type of blues. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Was definitely, he was so individual in his sound. You know, Zach, and he just like I said, he became so huge as Zach, and that's where yeah. he was. I think. Completely well, that, yeah, I mean, that's what he brought to the table. There was he's so, got uh, that country blues background. And that whole that chicken picking thing he he does yeah, is exactly. you know that's his that was his thing but it was innovative and it, nobody was really doing it you know and the pinch harmonic stuff that he does too you know um, in the, the the vibrato and the pinch harmonic yeah. it was kind of new too so but it wasn't but it, it didn't nothing it didn't really evolve from that you know that was it that's what that's where it ended you know because Jake brought something yeah. and it was different you know and uh, Brad Gillies brought something. It was different, you know, and Randy yeah. as well, you know. So it just, it, it just, like anything else, it just gets old and it, and it, yeah. and it dies. <laughs> it just kind of so, withers uh, away. John, Zach are you? Did, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Zach did a video <laughs> in Japan when he was first in. He was first in Aussie of that old Jerry Reed finger picking country thing that there's a famous guitar <laughs> thing that Jerry Reed did, and Zach yeah. did. Uh, 
Google that on YouTube or look for that of Zach Wild in Japan playing that. It's Zach, oh, like wow. he really blew me away the most as guitar playing with that because he's so, he's very deep as a well, guitar Zach, player. You know, yeah. Zach came from that Southern roots without like I, I saw him in Pride and Glory opening up for like Ted Nugent, Leonard Skinner back in the day, like Pride <laughs> and Glory without well, yeah, he's from, Southern he's like from South know, Jersey, right? Channeling yeah. like the yeah, Holmans and you know, so like down yeah, and Southern, stuff like that. Southern Jersey. He's from, so, yeah, he's from Southern Jersey, but he, he definitely could have, <laughs> he definitely, I think, wanted to be in the Allman Brothers. But uh, he's that he's from that town outside of Memphis called Trenton, right? Have you wrapped up your little segment there? I just want to interrupt you and then we'll move on and kind of yeah, wrap sorry. this up because we're running long. Yeah, yes, um, yeah, I mean, my, I, Got my uh, right, extra cool. picks or whatever was just Believer, I think that's a killer one. Nice. Uh, just it's really just like that's just a great song i don't know and um suicide solution i just like that and i just i you know part of, of it's just because i love the extended guitar solo at the end for both when jakey lee did it and when um randy rhodes did yeah. it and stuff so yeah those are those are my honorable mentions now and, andrew uh, cool. andrew has 30 mentions john <laughs> yeah 30 <laughs> honorable no, 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 I, I've been the, the whole black rain album I'm gonna, yeah, oh yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> he said the whole Black Rain album. That's I, I don't even think I ever heard that record, honestly. Um, it's got a great You're kick. Not on that. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not gonna talk a lot because uh, I've been talking the whole show. That's um, great. We love it. And cutting everybody off. Um, me too. Just me to too. It's, <laughs> me it's too. Zoom. That's what we do on Zoom. We cut people off, and I keep playing with Batula here. Yeah. I think I've mentioned like most of the ones that, you know, and everybody else has mentioned the other ones. No More Tears is a big one for me just because it, it was, uh, you know, it was kind of his, his Beatles song, you know, it was their, uh, I was, love it, that song. And they actually introduced a bass player who was like, where it used to be always the, about the guitar player when Mike Inez came in, it was like, Oh, who's this guy? You know, he's, yeah, right? he's pretty rad. And he wrote, he wrote that riff for, for no more tears. So that bass. So anyway, that's, that's, you know, I think I've said uh, a lot of things and uh, some of them were interesting. And, and thank some of you them... for getting our special guest Phil on tonight. It was an honor. Uh, to next next on. time I'm going to get the bus boy from Chi, uh, from Chi Chi's. So we're going to come. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Chi Chi's. Yeah. Chi so, Chi's. Is I still open? No, not by me. <laughs> not I by wish. <laughs> next time. Well, next time on the next episode of the Rock Fantasy Files, Andrew will find a bus boy. How about from In and Out? I actually, I'm gonna go there right after we're done. So. Oh damn! I'm hungry now. I want to go along, man. <laughs> I promised. I I promised my son after his baseball practice we were gonna go there, and I didn't have time because I had to be here. So <laughs> I hope he's, still he's like he's popping his head in like this episode. <laughs> are we going? Are we going? Or... <laughs> I want a milkshake and a and a cheeseburger, man. Pick me one up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Robin. Well, back to Robin, the amazing, amazing. Uh, uh, thanks for coming on tonight, and uh, thank you. What are your honorable mentions? And well, my honorable mentions are basically how I, I did it before, where with the albums, and I'm going to pick my honorable mention as "Bark at the Moon," and uh, my songs on there are "Rock and Roll Rebel." Um, what else do I have? I have "Waiting for Darkness." Yeah, and I have "Bark at the song. Moon." And basically, yeah. I feel like everything John <laughs> said, I feel like the kind of the same way, like after Ultimate Sin, I kind of drifted away for most of the other Aussie stuff. I kind of, uh -huh. I didn't really like what I was hearing and I never gave any of the other records, like any other songs on the records, like a chance, I guess I okay. should say. I, think I, I feel like I, I feel like I know what happened to John and why that was the album that did it for him. He walked into a show, he saw Ozzy in a full sequence robe and he said, I'm out. I, can't that didn't happen I was like, is this that, Phyllis Diller on stage or Ozzy? What the hell? I'm out of here. That wasn't was my Ozzie. problem, though. I didn't I have was, that issue. I, I was the Metallica fan that went there and then left, you know, or went to the back. Like, like, said, like Phil this. was saying, how you were the guy with the leather vest, and it's like, as soon as Metallica got out, they kind of headed out, and there comes Ozzy. But I mean, yeah. I was like the same person. I like, I mean, I love Metallica. I think everybody knows that, but I. Mm -hmm loved ultimate sin at that time so i want you know what i mean yeah and i actually yet another person i skipped school 
I skipped school a lot, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and I skipped school to go to the in-store to meet Ozzy. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like I did skip school a lot to go meet bands, I guess. I've heard but, you saying that you skipped school to meet other bands, too. I, I did. There were several. <laughs> like, it just feels like I skipped school a lot. To, they did in-stores before the concert, so it was during school time. Did, sure. you, did you check the autograph? Did it say Ozzy or did it say Phyllis? I'll, I'll go look actually. I have Sorry. a picture with him dressed like that. So you can, you can break it down for me. If oh you my want God. I want to see that picture. <laughs> it's on my Facebook. There's but... all to look for at this later. <laughs> but we'll yeah. Share it but, around. <laughs> but I do have, to, I do have to say like now that um, Andrew brought it up, the baseline in no more tears, like I get it for yeah, the most cool. part, but overall, I think that's probably the best part of the song for me. <laughs> Your mama told me. It's different. It was different. It was cutting edge for him. Yeah, it was definitely out of, like it was definitely out of the box, and it is. Yeah. You know, so okay, that's pretty much. Um, that's my thing. Yeah. So. All right, so we're gonna be wrapping the show up, and Love Chris Caffrey gets the last. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I've spoke more than everybody. So do I have any? Yeah, yeah let's go. We're done. <laughs> I, you came in late and spoke more. more. I have no credits. I have no more credits. That's my well, answer. Well, 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 no more credits. I'll ask Chris a question. And all I know is if I was to see Ozzy in Japan, I think Rock and Roll Rebel would probably be the funniest one to listen to the crowd sing. But that's all I have. To I really <laughs> now on the Rock Fantasy Files. Oh, one question for Chris. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I I, uh, I really don't. I know. Well, I, I, I know. I know what we can do. I, I'm now on the Rock Fantasy Files. We're all going to go and have dinner while Chris talks for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop uh, me. So Chris, I've got one question for you then, Chris. Chris, okay, uh, okay. listen up. Uh, are you interested in doing a episode on the band Sabotage? I could do that. I know, Jesus, if you want to spend three days, I got a few stories, but... Yeah, right, it'll it'll be like that. a series, like, a, like I said, I have, to, I have to see who they want to allow into that. There's a lot of... Uh, like, we were kind of we were we kind of set up a tentative date john and robin and i we were talking about it and we set it up for march 10th which will be a wednesday night but if it's something that has to be moved around we're really open with that but we'd love let me to, uh, let me speak to the powers of b yeah 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 it's uh it's All always right, cool. it's always something, but since got, since got, there is some the, other fans that'll come on and talk about the band. Yeah, too. I, I, the only the only problem right now, since there there is a it is at a time where there might be some unanswered sabotage questions coming into answers. Okay. They might want us to avoid doing anything sabotage right now. Okay, so I, we can I always say that. So later I on. might I might be asked not to do anything sabotage at okay. the moment. Very well. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I don't think at the moment I could do it. So Well, we do have some shows lined up in the next two weeks. We have um, next Wednesday, we'll be getting together about the band called Metallica. And that's one of Robin's uh, picks. Robin chose that episode. The week after that, we will be visiting the mighty Slayer. And John's got a couple things he's working on. Uh, he's been a great help to the channel. We'll be doing a Swedish death metal episode on friday and john who we, who do we have on that show uh we have what, fred from dismember yeah uh hopefully anders from unleashed um was it was it uh who's that robin um, jonas uh jonas. that was in grave and then yeah. hopefully jonas from at the gates and mark yeah Hall and then the crown is going to be joining us and then you got a bunch of other jonas's yeah. We'll probably drop by because uh, they're all yeah. Yeah. a Jack bunch of Jonas. Who's up, Jonas, Jonas, and Jonas? Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. Jonas, 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 Jonas from Sweden. I was trying to find ABBA, but it didn't work out. They uh -huh. weren't doing yeah. any more interviews. Yeah. But, uh, so, uh, so, anyhow, so anyhow, thank everyone for coming on tonight. Please look down and hit that subscribe button. And we've got plenty of things work in the works for this channel. And uh, it's always great to have some new people on. Great to have you on tonight, Rich. Hopefully we can revisit with you yeah. and bring you in to, for some Thanks other Thanks for having me on. Great. Thanks. Sydney, we're going to do an Alice Cooper one week. Thanks, we'll, of course, we have to have yeah, you. Yeah, I will be there for that one for sure. So just <laughs> let me know. <laughs> and of course, Robin, we'll see you uh, next week. And uh, we'll see Andrew probably next week. And John, uh, John's got Jeff from Possessed. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Hobbs from Suffocation coming on, and uh, we're going to be doing some of that stuff. And Chris Caffrey, so please check I, us actually, out. Actually, my, my, my band did open up for Metallica's very first show on the East Coast. 
All right. We'll be hearing at about the, uh, that. What was that theater at Fort Church? <laughs> What was the, the theater? theater. <laughs> you hear, that, hear about that? Was, the Metallica, Metallica show. Metallica Thank you very much. And my band Antsy, we opened up from Metallica. We got thrown off the stage <laughs> from Cairo. We actually got thrown off the stage. All right, guys. It was an honor you to think, have everybody you people on. People think I make this us. shit up, but I can't make this shit up. It happened. It all out. happened. Check us out at rockfantasy.com. Check out Sydney with the, uh, what do you got to plug tonight, Sydney? Battle from the inside, right? What do you got coming up? You got any good episodes? Uh, oh, yes, yeah. this, uh, this Friday, uh, I have an episode of coming out with Mark Weiss, a uh, legendary photographer, uh, photographed oh, nice. everybody from Van Halen to pretty much every band that you could think of. And I actually just interviewed a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer um, from one of my favorite bands of all time that is coming up in uh, a week from Friday. So the next week, um, always stuff in the works. You can find the Metal from the Inside podcast uh, anywhere you stream your podcast. We're also on YouTube at Metal from the Inside, and you can Final information at www.metalfromtheinside.com. So Excellent. stuff's happening all the time. I have to say something that's cool. Like I actually was skipping school at another in-store and I met Mark, the photographer <laughs> guy, because he was there. So, yeah, yeah. He, he photographed uh, Ozzy many times during that time period as well. Oh, I so, bet. you know, that was his first uh, shoot was actually Ozzy on the cover of Circus when he was in the tutu, so... <laughs> Bill's popping back. Oh, hey, uh, Bill's coming back. Hey, hey Rich. Rich so quick. He, does about, he does about 12 TSO concerts every tour. I could talk about him for an hour and a half. No. Well, hey, Rich, uh, what do you got coming up on Metal Asylum and some of your work coming up? You got to plug? We're always doing interviews at Metal Asylum on our Facebook page. So every week or every other week, we're talking to somebody. Like we just spoke to Metal Mike from the Rob Halford band this past oh. week. Ooh. And okay. um, sometimes, sometimes I do that. We do that through the Metal Hall of Fame as well because I contribute there. So interviews either pop up at the Asylum or at the Metal Hall of Fame. Yeah. And then I'm always, I'm always writing for Brave Words. And then you know I contribute to uh, Sea of Tranquility as well. I do oh, the course. Monsters Den there. I do yeah, the Monsters Den, and then um, uh, the top. We do uh, top albums <laughs> or we do um, top ten songs too. So Absolutely. I'm contributing to a few things. And I guess we're not leaving yet because Phil's back. I'm back. Cool. I'm back. I felt, I you felt didn't miss bad. anything. No. <laughs> I so felt Phil, really bad. Phil, I'm you've so got sorry. the room now. We were just ending the episode and you popped back in. And uh, so, hello. How, how convenient. <laughs> Andrew, you can tell Phil whatever you want. What were you saying about Phil when we were when he was off the air? No, I forget that. <laughs> I, I said all positive things about Phil. I just, you know, he's, he's my, he did, he's my he did. We, we did, I found this, Phil, uh, in my archives here, the picture disc for the ultimate sin. Wow. Yeah. And it has the, the picture of Ozzy on the back. Yeah, I was like, uh, uh, I, I don't know why I never got included in that picture. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. didn't you get to bite any butts on that? Um... No, but I did date Julie Gray for a while, that girl. <laughs> We That's actually, uh, oh, yeah, my dog is barking at Bark at the Moon. Was right. my, I, my dog is barking at Bark at the Moon. Yeah. Okay. Major, Major always knows when it's time to go out. You have to, you have to just leave. See? I gotta go let my dog out. See you later. All right, Chris. Good night. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, so. I never leave. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> he, really, he went, he left, he had to go, huh? Yeah, yeah, well, that's well, the thing okay. with this show. Uh, Chris Caffrey is like a, uh, he's kind of like a stuffed elephant that we have as a, as a uh, um, so mascot. Angry, he's like know. the show. We are still live, Andrew. I know. He's a show. <laughs> okay. I said he's like a show. He's like a mascot. He's a show mascot. He comes in in whatever state he's, he is. He, you know, may have just watered the lawn or shoveled the driveway. He come. He may have been, today it looked like he was out hunting. He was deer hunting or something because he had the red <laughs> the red hat on and he you know the, with the whatever the, the the hunter hat so he came he looked like elmer fudd it's elmer fudd hat, the way he <laughs> so he, i think he just came in from a from a, a fox hunt basically and uh Andrew's sat down chris Allo and humor i think maybe you're, you're, told us he told I think us he, I, actually, I think he was yeah. hunting caribou, caribou. <laughs> he was hunting something. Yeah. Uh, he could be out in the, out here now. It's about twenty degrees. We got a foot of snow on the ground. He could be caribou. Maybe he's like, hunting if you squirrel. Know, if you know Chris, you know personally, he's that is him all the time. He's just like 
random yeah, thought. Yeah, animated. I got to go. Uh, you know, you'll be talking to him and, and then he's gone. Like first, then you turn around, he's back and I'm continue the conversation today. that he ended three years earlier with you. So and great. Wilbur did not come on the show today, but, but that Chula is here because it's Ozzy Osbourne and I've got my Super 7 toy out. I'm having a lot of fun. I do not talk through the third person with him. You're scaring the shit out of that thing. <laughs> so Phil, what do you what do you want to talk about? Do you want to you don't want to hang out still? You got you you can do our closing statement tonight. How's that? Closing statement. Jeez, uh, that's that's a tall order because I haven't been part of the whole show, so I don't really know how to close it. <laughs> Just been talking about our favorite Aussie songs. We were talking about some of the concerts. Uh, we were talking about oh. the, the Ultimate Sin tour. What, Ozzy Ultimate Sin at the Meadowlands. We were trying to recollect as that's the night that they were throwing all the seat cushions. Tore up the seats. They tore they up the seats. That was it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they ripped Yeah, I'm sorry. Seats. I was there. You were? <laughs> yeah. I thought sorry. I recognized you from someone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> someone stole but, his know, jacket. They threw his jacket when everybody was throwing the seats. Yeah, jacket. they threw my jacket on that, my <laughs> denim jacket. <laughs> It was weird because all of a sudden there was there was like a seat. I saw a seat cushion and then I saw another. And before uh, as any time had passed, there was a sea of seat cushions being flown around, being thrown around. Yeah. I, the, the one thing I remember in the, the discussions that took place after that was that, <laughs> that the insurance went up to two hundred thousand dollars a night after wow. that. <laughs> Yeah, so, it was made, like the local news and everything. They were claiming Ozzy was inciting right. like uh, violence and a riot because he kept like go crazy, go crazy. And then you know, I can remember like where I was sitting that there was like 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 foam dust in the air from it being thrown around. It was that bad. <laughs> we gotta be careful because if anyone if anyone says to me to go crazy, I usually start rioting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ozzy only said that how many times a show? Or the, you know, along with I think, the of water. <laughs> well, I think it was it was it was part of his uh, regular dialogue, and he tapped into that several times an hour. But uh, yeah, I mean, the funniest one was when we were in Japan one time because we were it was on that tour, and um, we were playing at the Budokan, and um, uh, the Japanese audience was uh, very different from European audiences or American audiences because yeah, yeah. they 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 wouldn't make a, a, it wasn't a continuous roar it was actually deathly silent and then they would yeah. in unison they would usually say something which sounded along the lines of hey in unison like they'd been rehearsing <laughs> so ozzy would say go go crazy and they go hey and he'd look look at me <laughs> and he'd go go fucking crazy and they go hey <laughs> and then he'd go, they go no he goes look Go fucking crazy and keep going fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was, you know, culture. It was a different culture. And back then it was, the, we, you know, it was still those early days when they were not used to too many, um, you know, uh, Western bands going over there. Yeah, okay. We were treated very much like, you know, we're, you know, I'm sure you heard the story. You get off the plane, you like are the Beatles about to arrive here or something? Who are all these people for? Yeah. It was for us. And as far as they went, uh, they were concerned. A lot of the Japanese fans and stuff, they weren't into like blonde hair and bleached hair and stuff, but they all had the same kind of black hair and the same kind of look, the same kind yeah. of everything. So we stood out like sore thumbs, you know, especially, you know, an Aussie, of course, the way look, he looked. And um, so we all looked. Randy's girlfriend at the time was uh, was a tall, <laughs> a tall blonde lady, and she you, like it, if you were out shopping, in yeah exactly if you were out shopping, <laughs> you would see her about four miles away, right? Because she stood. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to give me like nightmares here or something. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, we we were talking earlier that it, uh, it was the Phyllis Diller look. <laughs> Phyllis Diller. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it was. Uh, I, I think that the origins were that um, that Ozzy went to see Diana Ross at the at the uh, Royal Albert Hall, oh. and he was he was amazed because she was wearing she was wearing some outfit and she shone out like a like a, a star. You couldn't even focus your eyes on her. It was so brilliant. 
he mm-hmm. said something something along the lines of that's you know when you're on that stage you've got to look as big as possible i want to do something like that and that's apparently how the whole the whole thing started um wow. Florida meyer was the clothing designer who designed all of that stuff and she designed a lot of stuff for all of us um she made everything for bands like motley crew or for rod stewart or even earth wind and fire um <laughs> lots and lots of very diverse bands but she dressed white snake she dressed the scorpions she dressed uh okay. tons and tons of bands and can, this she dressed us i can see the connection between earth wind and fire and that aussie look for sure uh, yeah and fire were always like the, you know came for those disco era and they always had the sequin and the polyester and you know <laughs> but, so ozzy was not phyllis stiller john it was okay like, if, if you like ozzy was more like break wind and fire <laughs> 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 but uh, I was I had another question too, just a general one is like, just is there any like crazy stories from that tour? Maybe something with with you guys and Metallica, or just something interesting that might be fun for us to listen, you know, hear about. Well, there were there was there was funny stories all the time. I mean, um, yeah, we had funny stories. I mean, you know, Ozzy is a practical joker. You know that. So yeah. you have to have your wits about you and you have to have if you don't have your wits about you you must have protection at all times uh, i'm not talking about condoms i'm talking about like like dead bolts portable dead bolts that you can put in your hotel door because uh, one of his favorite tricks was to slip people a mickey and then when you oh, passed wow. out get into your hotel room and then shave one of your eyebrows off oh. so that was that was a favorite trick he would do that to lots of people um, and it was part of the initiation. It, it happened to a certain degree to me. So you didn't um, have that happen to you? I was just going to ask. It happened. Well, was it like a crew time. full of people with one eyebrow? No, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, I, his thing was, his thing was like he'd say, he'd say, um, he'd say the greatest thing about doing this practical joke is that no matter how mad the other person gets, they're going to walk around looking like a like a dick for the, for at least a month. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but you can't, and you can't read their expressions because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know that. if he's mad because I can't tell. Yeah. Me, I see that. But he, he did. He yeah, did I have to head out, unfortunately. Um, but it was so nice to be here, and thank you, Steve, for having me. And okay, great. Thank, thank you, you, Phil, for coming on. Uh, but yeah, you. thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, this you is were we've turned us into a fireside chat with no fireplace right now. So we're doing this. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank Thanks. Thanks for the All see right. You. See you guys. See you Monday. See you. See ya. Anyway, uh, just, just real quickly, as far as the, the, the Metallicas go, um, the only story that really uh, struck out was that uh, um, uh, the, I think the first gig or the second gig that we did with Metallica. Some something went down between the band and the road crew, and all of a sudden the fight broke out. Really? <laughs> yeah. And it was it was touch and go for a moment because it looked like the tour was going to end as quickly as it started, at least as far as Metallica went. But there had to be very rapid peace treaties drawn, drawn up, <laughs> and uh, and and everything got back on on track again very very quickly before it got it got bad. But uh, I think it was Johnson City. Somewhere around there. Johnson anyway, City. I don't know what it was about. I don't even wow. know what it was about. Some altercation between the road crew and and, and Metallica. And so. Wow. Eh, but the last night of the show was fun. The last night of the tour, we uh, we bombarded them with everything we had. We uh, <laughs> we stood on the side of the stage after dipping our hands into honey and granulated sugar, and make made sure we gave everybody a good handshake before they went on to start their set. Oh. <laughs> then, then they got bombarded with um, inflated condoms, uh, string. You remember those string, aerosol string yeah. things? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we threw everything over, the, everything we had, stink bombs. At a certain point, the road crew came out and started dismantling Lars' drum kit, one drum at a time, until he had nothing but a, a seat and a snare drum by the end of their set. So... I felt actually bad for the fans because they probably got gypped at the show. But like, what the hell is going on up there? So Ozzy <laughs> with the stink bombs again. You were talking about the stink bombs when you were on earlier. How he liked to go buy the little bottles. Yeah, uh, we we do. Um, he had Ozzy had a um, a nephew who was a uh, his hairdresser, um, and he was uh, he was he 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 was a very very effeminate gay guy. Um, but he had the, the kind of vo- voice that went along with it. 
And one time we were in New York, they went into one of these booths where you can record your voice. Okay. And they got, they got Terry to sing his version of New York, New York. <laughs> and it was very much like, I'll try to impersonate, stop spreading the news, I'm leaving today. <laughs> and it was very much like, so one of the last, so that last, uh, that last uh, Metallica show, what, what Ozzy did is he said to them, look, I want you to keep their monitors <laughs> playing back what's going on, but I want to be able to have a microphone that then goes out, out front, but I don't want them to know that I'm speaking out front. So Metallica's about to go on. So their intro music all of a sudden changed into this New York, New York. Oh. <laughs> and then when, and then when uh, James went up to the microphone, he's probably like, hey, how are you guys doing? And it's like, hey, how the fuck are you? I was, I was just jacking off backstage, but I figured I had to come out and perform for you lot. <laughs> and everyone's going like, what? And James has no idea this is happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sort of idea of the practical jokes that would take place on the road and it was hysterical I and mean, we'd laugh about it and everything but we have to definitely had a sense of humor about it if you didn't have a sense of humor you were you were not going to be a happy camper that's some great stories we, we, we had Vinny Apice on uh, on the show a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about the practical jokes that went on with Sabbath with Dio in the band and it sounds similar uh, when Ozzy, of course, you know, uh, th those guys kept the practical jokes going. But I guess a lot of bands, of course, have done that over the years. But yeah. Well, that's what we used to do. I mean, before, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have any, we barely had TV on anything. All yeah. we used to do was sit on a bus and tell jokes and make, you know, <laughs> find things to laugh about. Because if you didn't, you'd go, you'd go nuts. I mean, you'd, you'd go yeah. mental. Yeah, yeah. So humor was the one thing that, kept everybody in good spirits and uh, and I really miss that sometimes but you know in this band in last in line I mean we try to keep that going as well as I'm sure Andrew will testify but yeah. you know and and Vinny is certainly has been the subject of as much jokes as, as, we all, as we all have been you know but yeah. it's it's something that we we think is is really funny I mean it's it's part of what draws you together and you know helps you have a good time uh, and, and then, you know, when you do, everybody has bad shows, but, you know, you try to laugh about that too. I mean, you, you've got to treat it with a bit of a sense of humor. It's not, you know, there's nothing worse than having a postmortem where everybody's like, oh, you, you played a bum note. You know, of course you played a bum note. Everybody plays bum notes, but the, la the best you can do is have a laugh about it, you know, yeah, not yeah. take the jobs too seriously. And we laugh often about it. <laughs> Are you implying that I play about a lot the of bum, bum notes, notes, Andrew Freeman? What's that? <laughs> Are you implying that I play a lot of bum notes, Mr. Oh, Freeman? I mean, uh -oh. <laughs> you have two other people in the band. I, 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 I would, wasn't implying that I sing on key, so that's, you know, <laughs> these things happen. So, so who's, who's they, they the happen most, often. <laughs> who starts the most practical jokes in this current edition of Last in Line? Uh, we do any practical no, jokes. I mean, not, none of them are very practical. They're not, not practical. practical. <laughs> <laughs> No we have jokers. <laughs> Everyone in this band has an Achilles heel, let's put it that way. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, Vinny's Achilles heel may be his, his penchant for, um, you know, uh, uh, sugary items, let's say. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we but have no, a whole series. Really, it's like, we, we, you know, we, we kind of take the piss out of each other and each one, each person has the sort of prerequisite characteristics that once they stumble on it everybody else is going to jump on it and, and and poke fun at them and we have a we have a laugh doing it it's funny yeah. it's it's so funny i think that you know one day maybe we'll we should put it all into a big video or book or something i don't know <laughs> i have i have so many vinny apathy um wilford brimley memes that i created it? myself that's it um, that that's the one thing we do because you know vin he's you know, into the sweet stuff. So every time we always try to snap pictures of him in front of food or in front of, you know, you know, when it, in a diner, like when we're in a diner in the East Coast and they have all the cakes and everything at the yeah, yeah. counter, uh, you know, I have a really great shot of him, you know, trying to get, <laughs> looking at, looking at all the cakes and there's the guy who was behind the counter and moved his head, put Wilford Brimley's head on it, made it a diabetes ad, you know. <laughs> Is that the pic, Andrew? Is that the picture where where Vinny sort of almost looks like the, the Black Adder when he's 
Pyramid yeah, decks. pretty much. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a <laughs> bunch of them. But I, we just have never put them out because I, you know, I, I should start putting a couple of them up. There you go. <laughs> How to, how to, how to, how to uh, win friends and influence people. But it's, uh, <laughs> no, it is funny though, but uh, it, you know, it's sometimes Vinny's just in, you know, innocuously walking through an airport and it just so happens we're sort of just waiting for the perfect shot. You have to wait for the oh, perfect yeah. shot as he walks into the frame where in the background there is something incriminating and then you take the picture and then you say, hey, see, here it is. He's like, oh, it wasn't that, that wasn't me. I was just walking, walking past. And it it all started by him having a like a he was having a tiny little bag of snack Fritos on a Southwest flight flight once, <laughs> you know. And somebody just snapped a picture of it, and it just be, it just became this thing, you know. Whereas like me and Phil are just following around, going, is he is he crack, is he in catering? Is he is he by the is he by our stuff? You know, <laughs> just trying to catch a picture of him anywhere we can, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, but at, one point, at, at one point shortly afterwards, uh, Google search engines got completely shut down by these uh, endless searches for images of Wilfred Brimley because we were trying to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that on the uh, the last in line version of the Rock Fantasy Files. Yeah, well, well you can do that anytime you like. Uh, and Phil, you're always welcome to come on anytime you want. We do this. A couple times a week, every Wednesday, usually we cover different bands. If you ever just want to come and chat with us, you're more than welcome anytime. I'd love to. That's right. It's really, it really fun. And I apologize again for the for the cock up with the timing. Oh, no, no, it was great. You, you were in the beginning. And now people, if they want to watch this show, they're going to have to fast forward it. to the end again now. <laughs> they're going to have to suffer through all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop watching until the two hour mark when Phil comes back from dinner. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, I'm quite impressed by your posters and all that stuff that's behind you. It's very impressive. Oh, you like, this, is, uh, this is my, uh, I call it my bunker. And this is uh, my living room from the 80s. I, of course, I have my record shop and uh, I'll spin it around. The whole room is full of blacklight posters and crazy Holy shit. machines. But uh, yeah. Oh, dude, he's not, he's not messing around. He's, it's just like 50 years of collecting here. So. I'm, and, and the people think I'm Garth Algar. But uh, <laughs> last night, last night I was actually told by, an, by a, a radio DJ that I am no longer him. I am now Ricky Medlock. From Ricky Medlock. Yeah, yeah. From wow. Blackfoot? Sure. Yeah. I guess I got the same hair as Ricky. I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, you I do. not Native American blood, unfortunately. <laughs> my wife does. <laughs> but uh, yeah, cool. I guess we should wrap this up. If you want to add any, anybody have another question for Phil but, uh, or anything. And we'll... I had one question. What, what band were you playing before, right before you got the Aussie gig? I was playing with Jimmy Page. And I was uh, in an cool. early, early version of The Firm. It was the, the original version of The Firm. Oh. Um, and I'd started working with Jimmy a few months before, prior to that um, through connections I had with Swan Song. Um, and he had wanted to get back into playing. So the three, it was three of us. It was, it, was, it was Chris Slade, Jimmy, and myself. We were just rehearsing every day. We were just literally playing, jamming every single day. And... Um, uh, in the meantime, I also was, I would, I would do gigs here and there. The, I was playing with a guitar player by the name of Robin George. And that was the guy who called me up to do this, this TV show. Uh, and then I had this dilemma. I got the Aussie gig and uh, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I, I went to talk to Jimmy about it. Because I was a huge, huge fan of Jimmy's and he's just the, the greatest. And, uh, and I said, quite frankly, I said, this is what's going on. And I don't really know what to do. And he said, well, it depends. If He said, I'm not really going to be ready to do anything for at least another year and a half or so. Um, so if you want to go out there and you want to get out there straight away, then you would do the Aussie thing. And if you want to stick around, I'd love to have you. And I decided to do Aussie. And, you know, Jimmy and I stayed friends. For, uh, we, we saw each other many, many times after that. We stayed friends for a long time. And every, anytime I would go back to England, I'd usually, we'd usually get together and go and have a few drinks or spend some time together. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a uh, it was one of the greatest times of my life. I guess yeah, just I mean, that's pretty cool. Jimmy, Holy crap! How Jimmy would 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 you know see how someone like that would um, you know work his ideas and 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 yeah. and, and go through and 
where his influences came from. And I managed to tie a lot of my influences to his as well, because I was really influenced by a lot of 50s uh, Americana, rock and roll, rockabilly, you know, Bill Black, people like that. I went through a whole phase of that. So these, this was right in alignment with what Jimmy loved. I mean, he loved Scotty Moore and he loved, you know, uh, uh, guitar players of that era. Um, and uh, we sort of, I could see how, you know, we, we jammed all of that stuff. We played a lot of those, those songs. And it was really funny because uh, Chris Slade at one point had to go off and do a tour with a, um, I think he went off, it was either with Mick Ralphs or with Dave Gilmore. He had to go off and do this tour. So we needed to get another drummer. So I said to Jimmy, who should we get? And he goes, well, I think we should get Rat Scabies. And I said, Rat Scabies from The Damned? He said, yes. I said, why on earth can we get Rat Scabies in? He goes, because if John Bonham was alive, he'd probably sound like Rat Scabies. Because <laughs> Rat, Rat played with huge drums and no damping at all. And it was just like a train coming through wow. the room. And we ended up playing together for, for quite some time. And we would go out at night. And we had a great time. It was really a fantastic time. Who, who was singing for that stuff or he didn't have anybody? Well, it was always, it was always slated that Paul Rogers would sing. But uh, he hadn't come in yet and hadn't started. Jimmy was was just really finding his feet, I think. Oh, so super and, uh, early on. Yeah, and, and I mean, I was nervous as hell when I first went to play, when I first got that call. And um, I showed up at Nomis Rehearsal Studios with Chris and we were waiting for Jimmy to show up. And when he came in, we started playing. I mean, I was just terrified that this wasn't going to work out. And yeah. Jimmy was having a hard time sort of explaining what he was trying to do and and he, he broke the ice. I wrote about it. In my, I'm writing a book at the moment. I wrote a section about it where he stopped everything. And he said, look, I know you guys are really nervous about, about this, but he goes, I, if it makes you feel any better, so am I. I'm probably more oh. nervous. Than you. And with that kind of broke the ice. And then we started playing, you know, train kept rolling. We started playing all of these really cool rockabilly songs and, you know, communication breakdown. And, and we just played and played and played for, 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 for a long, long time, for days and days. Um, just got back into playing, just having fun with it. So, it so you were um, basically working with Jimmy Page. Were you like, was that pretty much the first thing he was doing after the breakup of Led Zeppelin, or was he do? Yeah. I forget if he did anything else. I think he, I think he didn't do anything for a couple of years just because he was so. Yeah, he strong. did the he did the soundtrack for uh, Death Wish. Yes, that's right. True. Yeah, and that was about that. that was a little while after that. He'd, he'd got the studio. He'd got the soul studio in Cookham Dean, which was his studio, which used to belong to Gus Dudgeon, who produced Elton John. And he'd bought that studio and we'd worked over there. And um, so we started doing just just playing. And, and, you know, it wasn't even called The Firm. We had a, a joke name for the band, which was which was the McGregor's. We called it the McGregor's because we thought that the there was a band called the Smiths and we thought that was just the, the worst name we could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as stupid as calling a band the McGregor's. And so that's what, that's sort of, that's kind of what we started, you know, with that name, but eventually it became the firm. When I left, then Tony came in, Tony Franklin and Tony had been working with Roy Harper and through that connection, Tony started, started playing and then Paul Rogers came in and it became the firm that everybody knew. But those early days, I don't even know if it was the firm. We, would ju we just spent a lot of time just jamming and jamming. It went on for a few months. So not, none of the songs on the album was any material that you... Yeah, one was. Closer, Closer, which was, <laughs> Closer, which was a riff I brought in. Wow. And I said, oh, I've got this riff. Let's work on this. And uh, if you listen to the, the riff in Closer, it goes through a change of timing. And I always really loved what Zeppelin did with Bisty Mountain Hop. You know, down, down, do, do, down, down, do, do, you know, it does down, 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 it turns around. So yes. I did the same sort of thing with this riff and played it, and Jimmy liked it. And I remember the first gig that they did, and I was with 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 their tour manager. I was sitting down there at, at this gig in England, and they started closer. I went, "Hey, that's my song." <laughs> <laughs> And and Phil turned around to me and he said, "Well, I guess that's 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 a, that's uh, that, that's how it goes, or something like that." And then afterwards, I, I I saw Jimmy and I said to him, "You know that song, Closer? It's a riff. I had that riff." And he goes, "You did?" And I said, "Yeah." I said, "In fact, you don't know where it, you don't know where it came came from." And he goes, "Where did it come from?" And I said, 
I ripped it off from Misty Mountain up. He thought, he said, well, I know I liked it. <laughs> what an That's a trick. story. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. All right. but, I mean, how, how baller is it? How baller is it? Do you go and tell Jimmy Page, hey, man, I got another gig? <laughs> you know? <laughs> It wasn't like that. It was. It was. Honestly, I know, yeah, but I'm I, just saying, like, yeah, you know, I, I'm still doing Jimmy Page. Gig, you know. No, I, I, I didn't take any of that for granted at all, and I, I always knew every day. I, I, I suspected that at some point, you know, he'd probably come in and they'd be like, "Okay, thanks, guys. It's been really great, but here's my band. Here's what I'm going to do." And so we were there, just enjoying every day for as as it came. But right. at this particular time, I, I guess I had to make a decision. I mean, getting getting off at a gig from Ozzy was was no, you know chicken feed eat either i mean it was a yeah. it was a big yeah. deal and so it was a it was a terrible problem it was a it's an envious problem to have but, yeah, I but yeah you have a problem between jimmy page or ozzy osbourne, osbourne. to play with it's like yeah, really awesome. wow, life yeah. sucks like, right? yeah, God, my life sucks. <laughs> yeah but i don't want to i don't want to sound like i was you know uh, unappreciative of something like yeah. that I was, yeah i was very very blessed to find myself in that position i mean I'm, Several years before, I'd written a, a, a letter to Jimmy Page after John Bonham had passed away saying, if you ever want to put a band together, you know, I'd love to be considered. And I sent it. And, and, and you know what happened? Nothing. I didn't get any response to it whatsoever. And so when I started working with them, with, 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 with Swan Song, I, I, I remember going into this one room where there was this un open mail and I was frantically rummaging through it to try to find that letter because I wanted to get rid of it you know <laughs> so but uh, to find myself in a position where I was actually playing with 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 these with 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 Jimmy and playing with Ozzy and being considered for these was extremely fortunate yeah I can't let you go without asking about what was your connection with Swan Song in the first place uh, I was in a band called Wildlife and it was Simon Kirk's band from Bad Company Okay. And I'd, I'd, I'd auditioned for the band. I got the gig with the band and we did, right. an, we did the last record on Swan Song Records and we were managed by Peter Grant. Oh, wow. And Peter was in his, you know, latter years. Uh, and fortunately, the band, it, did, it was OK. I mean, it was very AOR sort of sounding. It was not it was sort of, you know, it was nothing crazily new or anything like that. But unfortunately, the band became a, a, a bit of a ping pong ball in the uh, negotiations that Atlantic wanted Swan Song to release unreleased Zeppelin material and Swan Song didn't want to do so as tribute to John Bonham and they said no we don't want to release this stuff and so they said basically eventually it came around it's like fine then we're not gonna we're not gonna do you any favors with your label with distribution and we were unfortunately the uh, subject of that so the band petered out and uh but I, I made good friends at Swan Song. Phil, you know, Clive Colson, Brian Gallivan, all of those people. And then Phil, who ended up, I mean, his daughters, my goddaughter, were really close. Wow. And so he was looking after Jimmy. And he was the one who called me up and said, I've been talking to Jimmy. He wants to start playing again. Would you like to come down and be part of, you know, just playing? That's, That's rad. Really That's yeah. pretty badass. Yeah. I mean, even just to play with the guys from Bad Company. Yeah, I, was, I learned a lot from Simon. And I mean, Mick, that's, Mick, that's... Mick was fantastic. And Boz was great. Boz gave me one of his basses. I had one of his basses. He gave me the gift. But Simon, I mean, for a bass player, to play with someone like Simon, who's the ultimate backbeat drummer. I mean, you learn a lot about feel, a lot about backbeat. And at a young, young age, I learned very quickly that it wasn't a race to the finish line. And I had to be but very wary of where my bass notes were being placed in relation to his kick drum. Wow. So it sounded, so that I got that feel. And so, and there's, there is no feel, no one has that, that feel that Simon has. You know, I love Free. I love, Andy Fraser was one of the biggest influences. And to play with Simon as well was every bit as exciting as working with some of the other people I've mentioned. But uh, to be able to, you know, try out some of those Free lines with the guy that actually played the drums yeah. was, wow. That'd have been amazing, like schooling as a musician. Holy crap! Exactly. You know? That's my point. That's yeah. my point. It was an education, and it was a it was a diving at the deep end education as well. You know, Andy was a very very talented guy. He was, was a fifteen years old, sixteen years old, classical musician, bass player, and would play. Uh, what happened? Oh, would play uh, 
and and would would write most of that stuff you know it's crazy yeah yeah that's that's awesome that's a, i didn't know about all that backstory that's that's really killer yeah. thank you for sharing that we appreciate it You're welcome. Yeah, it's great uh I think we better wrap things up right now. <laughs> this is the longest episode of Rock Fantasy Files ever. And uh, Phil, thanks for being part of the history-making episode. All right, come on. Bugger off. you got to go to bed. It's way yeah. past your bedtime. <laughs> yeah, we're old men. I'm an old man. But, uh, but we'd love to have you back on again and uh, sit and chat some more. And uh, John, some great questions you had for Phil at the end here. Oh, well, thanks, yeah. And uh, who wants to close the show tonight? We're closing again, guys. Please like and subscribe. Do I have to say that again, though? <laughs> Please okay. like and subscribe to the Rock Fantasy Files. We appreciate all of your time. And uh, we're going to go eat and go to sleep. Yeah, he has, <laughs> Andrew's still going to in and out so. <laughs> it's still Andrew, you're, you're, you're such a natural with that kind of stuff, Andrew. You know that. Right? Oh, what, yeah. with eating burgers and getting fat? No, no, no. I mean, with the first <laughs> The closing statement, you knucklehead. I am. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's not me. It's Jacob. Jacob wants to go in and out. I don't know if he's eaten yet. So he hasn't. He's been peeking in every now and then. It's like, you're still doing this, Dad? <laughs> that, that, that's the in and out part of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's as close as he's getting tonight. <laughs> well, all right. Sydney, Sydney says goodbye. Sorry she had to leave. She just texted me and, uh, and uh, she would love to uh, have Andrew and Phil on her podcast sometime too. So if you'd like to work okay. something out like that. And yeah. uh, thanks everyone. I hope everyone puts in the comments your favorite Aussie moments or songs or albums or if you uh, have any questions for Phil, pop them in the comments and uh, Check out Last in Line, of course, and uh, we're out of here, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Thanks.